the kickoff. It'll be a little bit later. It's Samaritan against Rangers in Paisley, live here on Sports Sound and BBC Radio Scotland with Neil McCann, Stephen Thompson, and Liam McLeod. Huge pressure on Rangers, that's for sure. Three wins in their last nine and just one win in their last five league games. That was against Tavernian at Ibrox. Their last away league win was at Kilmarnock at the end of February. They have won at Easter Road in the Scottish Cup since then. But that Dundee game last time out in the Premiership was the ninth time they've dropped points in the league this season. And it was the first time they haven't scored in a league game since losing at home to Celtic at the start of September the run ending at 28 games and success in front of goal which they were denied by Dundee on the evening Dundee probably deserved a share of the points and we know that Ross County deserved their victory over Rangers who did hit back with Scottish Cup semi-final victory themselves a week ago and up against a hungry St Mirren side who currently hold a two point lead over their rivals for fifth spot Dundee and of course that place in the Premiership has had European football unlocked for it by virtue of Aberdeen losing in their Scottish Cup semi-final eight days ago. Perfect conditions here in Paisley for this one. Rangers are going to kick off right to left, just about ready to go. Nick Walsh is the ref. Rangers all in blue as we watch from the back of the main stand will shoot right to left, defending the goal that the away fans are housed. And St Mirren in their black and white stripes, as you would expect here in Renfrewshire as they look to try and get back into the winning stable themselves here without one in their last four since the win over Aberdeen, which they were heading for defeat in, but for the two goals in stoppage time. So we're obviously just waiting for the TV broadcaster, who is Sky, to come off an ad break because there's this awkward situation with the referee <laughs> is looking over at the floor manager who's looking increasingly nervous <laughs> as the seconds pass because everyone's now watching him on the pitch. The players, they're all looking for the, the go-ahead. And I believe we're about to start. Nick Walsh about to tap the stopwatch for the first time, blows the first whistle, and we're underway in this oh-so-crucial battle here in Paisley, Rangers with the ball, with Tavernier on the right-hand side, long towards the edge of the Saints box, headed away by Gogic, flicked back into the area by Diamande, and it's a high ball, which is comfortably taken as he hooked it over his head for Zach Hemming, who has it at the edge of his own box. The third time Rangers have been here this season, it's one of those fixture anomalies that only seems to affect the 95, 96% of the fixtures in the the country, there's a couple that you don't see that happen. Rangers, Celtic, the Edinburgh Derby as well. Those two seem to be protected from it. As O'Hara, who's got a brilliant goal-scoring record against Rangers, as Neil McCann knows only too well. He managed a few at Dundee as well. As Tavernier's caught in the back. Chance for St Mirren and Mandron's effort saved by Butland. Well, shades of the old firm game at Ibrox a few weeks ago in the opening stages of the game from James Tavernier, who was caught in the hop by Mikel Mandron. But his effort low towards the bottom left was saved by Butland and it stays nothing each. But what a, a nearly let off for Rangers and for their captain in particular. As Rangers come up the other end, Cantwell at the edge of the box, Shanks is shot wide of the right hand post. And it's St Mirren nil, Rangers nil. But should Mandron have scored? It's a difficult chance, Do you know what? It was hesitant from James Tavenier and Mandron pounced on it. He, he's at a difficult angle, he gets his shot away well. And uh, Jack Butlin has to make a smart save, but what an opportunity for St Mirren early on. Uh, yeah, I mean, would you say, Neil, that he should score? That's a difficult chance. The angle's against him, isn't it? He gets yeah, he not a bad effort away. He knows he's got to take it early because he's, he's coming under heat with a recovering uh, defender, but uh, yeah, it's a decent effort. Looking at how they're setting up, you boys are spot on. We, we killed him at Menemen playing off the side from Andron, but what both the uh, white players are doing at times are dropping in into the just in front, almost playing like a box. Tom, you and I discussed it yeah, yeah. with Ahara and Boyd Munster, so they're, they're, they're clearly not going to let uh, Rangers try and dominate through the middle of the pitch and build play they're going to try and choke that area in pounds just like they did there for Mandroy's chance yeah, memories of that early Dyson Maida goal at Ibrox 
As Balogun struggles to clear, chance here, Simiran again, Mandel's in at the byline, tries to pull it back, it's cut out, would have been a corner. The referee's blown his whistle for a Rangers free kick. It is an extremely positive start to proceedings by St Mirren. It is, and again, it's really poor and sloppy from Rangers. Mandron pouncing again on some slack play from Rangers. I think he maybe used his hand. I think that's what Nick Walsh was saying to knock it into the box. But a fantastic start from St Mirren. We were hamstrung in that opening game between the two here this season when Ryan Strain was sent off. Ended up comfortably losing that. 3-0, it was 1-0 Rangers last time they were here. Shaky start from James Tavenier. He's been losing possession a couple of times now, but I have to say I like St Mirren's uh, set-up. Cantwell's actually playing a stranger position where I know he likes to play in that 10, but he's going up and standing beside Dessers. That's making it really difficult for Rangers to play through the middle of the park because that's a man down then. And the way St Mirren are operating with Boyd Munson and Nahara and Kilty dropping in, there's not too much room for him to stroke it about. The wide areas is where they might get some joy. John Suter on the left-hand side, the centre circle across the halfway line. Out to Barisic with the low ball on the left, looks to bend the ball into the box. It's a really deep cross, which is flicked away by Tanzar at the expense of the corner. He knew Dujon Sterling was behind him, he yeah, wasn't sure. I don't know whether he needs to header that there. He's given away a corner, I think it was going to go out anyway, but it wasn't taking any risks. But it gives Rangers a chance now to put the ball into St Mirren's box. It was a... Poor cross for me from yeah, very unusual. Maris, it's really high and floaty. I just felt as though Tanza could have just let that one run. Looks set for a move to Turkey in the summer. Bernabarisic, more headlines today about that. As he comes out of contract. He's not the only one at Rangers. There'll be big changes, you would imagine, in the summer as Philip Clement gets watching an Silva. Opportunity. He's, so, Silva's totally spared here, right on the penalty spot. All alone, in comes the corner from Barisic, he gets deep towards the back post, Hemming gets it half away, Lundstrom picks up on the edge of the box, puts it in, and Dessel just needed to get any kind of contact on that, and he's probably scoring, goes over his head, he's annoyed with himself, and after four and a half minutes, it stays St Mirren nil, Rangers nil. He needs to be stronger, because you're dead right, Liam, we're right behind that, Lundstrom, I don't know if he's trying to feather one into the top corner, but it's going right for Dessel's in between, I don't know if it's Bolton maybe picking him up, but all he needs to do is just nudge him, and get the meat he's a flicks on that because I mean Hemming he's outside his goal he's, he's coming he's punched he's not recovered properly that's a real good chance four changes in the Samaritan lineup from the one that lost at Celtic Park last time out they were excellent in the first half they were the better team in the first half but as Celtic have done so often this season they found the gears when they needed to and overran them in the end Bolton, Strain, McMenamin and Mandron all coming into the side today Rangers with a couple of changes Barisic and Silva coming in from the team that won the Scottish Cup semi-final seven days ago I'll tell you what St Mirren have got a great hunt on we're talking about Richard asked me a question uh, what, how you do it and how you eliminate and, and cause a the opposition trouble in terms of not giving space, but St Mirren are hounding as a they team. They really are, aren't they? they are the that was really impressive. They're not leaving any gaps as well, making it so difficult for Rangers to play through. Coming out of play for a throw into St Mirren over on that far side. It's barely a breath of wind. It's a great day for great, a game. Yeah, great day for a game. It's the big Emirates Dubai flight makes its way in over oh, the far side of the away. North Bank. Yeah, it is Barisic. Uh, Glasgow Airport off to our right as Silva picks up on this near side and rolls it back to Lundstrom. The edge of his box, forward to Diamande, first time back into the feet of Lundstrom, who then well throws it out to Tavernier on the right-hand side. Across the halfway line, long ball, looking for Dessers, tries to make it stick, but Gogic is on to him. Really high-press game by St Mirren this afternoon, these early stages. It's about managing to continue that throughout the match is the challenge. As Barisic picks up on the near side. Down the line for Silva. Silva then just stepping away from Strain, poking it towards Cantwell. Gogic gets in the way, but Silva wins it back to the edge of the box. Rolls it to Lundstrom, right of the D, looks up at goal, and he fires it low past the left hand post. And it stays similar and nil, Rangers nil. That drew applause from the Rangers manager down below us as we approach the seven minute mark. It comes from a really poor. Uh, Gogic's mistake, Silva steps in, I feel as though he should have probably hit Well, it. you're right, Tom, I'm glad you said that, because I, I, this is something I've been saying for a, since he came into the club, actually, and then you, you, you talk about the chance that he, he takes a tumble in the box last week with. Anybody who's hardwired to be a striker 
doesn't pass that to Lundstrom. No. And Lundstrom takes a, a real long time before he steadies himself and chokes a shot eventually and it goes well wide. But you're looking for Fabio Silva to come and just hit it opened the target. Up perfectly yeah, though. everybody really backed off. Tavernier's under pressure oh. again in the break of the ball. Works Mandon's way left hand side of the box, shoots. Butlin oh, saves again and Parasic clears. Well, flag's gone up. But the referee's allowing an advantage for Rangers who are in possession and driving forward on the counter here. Silva looking for Sterling. He's overhit the pass yeah. though. And it goes behind for a goal kick up the other end. Had that gone in, it wouldn't have stood. But it's another real warning for that Rangers defence. And Mikel Mandron, he's an absolute battering ram up there. And he's causing all kinds of problems for the visitors' defence. Nil-nil. He is, and Rangers look a wee bit shaky defensively, I have to say. A wee bit rattled. That one kind of ricocheted two or three times. It made his way through to Mandron. On. He hits it on his left foot this time again. Again, the angle's very much against him, but another good save from Butland. The, the but flag went up. We don't know whether no, I, I, not. We'll get a I actually monitor. thought he was onside. I, looking at my initial feeling was he was onside, but I have to compliment uh, Steve Robinson and, and, and his tactics because all of these chances have come from St Mirren being hungry and being brave and doing a high press. Now, if you're Philippe, come on, and his coaching staff, just say, right, OK, they're going to press you. Get Fabio Silva in around Dessers, get Todd Cantwell around and clip over the press and get your wing-backs bombed on. Because what will happen if you bring the wide players in that will narrow up the, the, the wing-backs of St Mirren and then you can get your full-backs on? Because just now, there's no way through. St Mirren have got this absolutely perfect just now. They'll know it's a vulnerable Rangers side as well. Although they won the semi-final last week, I think there's real regret at hearts that they didn't make more of a game of it. Rangers cantered to that victory. Yeah, they did. Uh, but again, that's down to the tactics that Todd Cantwell could have played with slippers on. He was just dropping in areas. We highlighted it at the weekend, watching that, um, that he probably about six or seven, he could have had another six or seven on top of that incident where he, he, he just drifts into space and hearts don't deal with it. If you don't deal with the tactical battle, then um, you're going to be in for a tough afternoon. Mohamed Diamande picking up wide on the right just inside the St Mirren half flashes it low infield to Cantwell on the spin trying to get himself away from his man Bolton it's now with Silva at the edge of the box rolls it to the overlapping Barisic is at the byline left foot clip ball comes into the area headed away by Gogic Cantwell will keep it alive for Rangers he's being forced back towards his own half he passes it back to Balogun who's right of the circle still in St Mirren territory short ball square to Lundstrom and then out to the touchline for Sterling and back to Lundstrom about to hit the 10 minute mark no goals yet Lundstrom thinks it forward looking for Cantwell no flag against Todd Cantwell but it's right through to Zach Hemming in any case well, Cantwell it. sorry it's Neil yeah Cantwell's looking to go in behind there because the space is so limited in in front yeah. with Gorgic and the two sitting midfielders there's not a lot of space and that's the sort of run he needs you to were make talking that, about yeah. they have to make especially him Silva yep. Dessers as well and the thing is Stevie if he, if he runs in and makes that run across with Dessers what he does he drags uh, either the, the, the right centre back in or even the, the wing back in you're talking about the space there was a, a the evidence of the space is going to be on the outside for Rangers today because as much as McMenamin wants to work back that's a, some shift here is the Saints number 10 McMenamin down the right hand side level with the edge of the D of the Rangers box he slips Lundstrom for company as well but he's Worked it back to O'Hara, who finds straight. Now McMenamin at the byline wins the corner. It's been an all-action St Mirren performance. He's got to stand it up, Stevie. He's got Mandron pulling in the back post and Tanzan. He's just got to stand it Think up there. Yeah, 100%. I'm pretty sure you would have. But it was good play from St Mirren on this right-hand side. A great pass from Ryan Strain through the legs to McMenamin. He gets to the byline and he's kind of indecisive with his ultimate decision. And you're right, the stand-up to the back post was the one. But in-swinging corner now. Chance here, Keelan Boyd months to take in swinger with the left foot from the Northern Irishman right in front of the Ranger supporters. In it comes, it's headed away by Souter. High up towards the edge of the box, little cushion header back out by Kilty. Looking for Boyd Munt, breaks though to Diamande at the edge of his own box. Long high clearance out to this near side. That looked like pushed by Silva, I mean, and it's a it's so ridiculous one because he's pushed Boyd Munt to the deck. Just Twice. about midway inside the Rangers half on this near side, and it's a chance for St Mirren to load the box. Yeah, it's just so naive. He's, he's gone nowhere, he's under pressure. Just either stand behind him, get him back towards the own goal, or try and nick it. But you give an opportunity now to St Mirren to load your box again. Greg Kilty was over it, former Kilmarnock player on this near side in his Kilmarnock debut 11 years ago against St Mirren and he takes this right foot and swings it high towards the back post area where it just bounces off the ground and back off O'Hara 
and behind for the goal kick and it stays Saints nil, Rangers nil on 12 minutes in Paisley remember Dundee Celtic to come later 3 o'clock start at Dens going back to that cross I, mean, I, I just feel that the game sort of is losing that knack where players are getting into the wide areas and picking the right choices talking about getting to the byline it should always be stood up if you're running about the middle of the 18 yard box you're trying to whip it into the space if you're deeper you're further into the penalty spot there was always areas when you're wide area when you're in a wide position as a winger that were trademarks to hit so your strikers didn't really need to look too much they knew where you were putting it now because wingers are more uh, encouraged to come in it's very rare that you're getting them picking the right options from the wide areas there's a ball boy down there with the most wonderful Mohican it's, it's incredible. incredible it's Travis Bickle and taxi driver stuff that it looks <laughs> like uh, it looks like when my son was younger he had a, a bike helmet <laughs> and it had a Mohican on it it's incredible it's very brave very good brave. on him good on him here's O'Hara on this near side see many of them in Paisley I thought that's a first for yeah. me Here's Lundstrom into the centre circle for Cyril Dessers. Rolls it low to Tavernier. Right-hand side of the centre circle in the St Mirren half. Passes it to Dessers. First-time ball for Sterling. Right-hand side of the box to Tavernier. Good build-up and it comes. Hemming makes the save. And it's booted to safety by James Bolton. Really good build-up play. Quick by Rangers this time. That's perhaps what, what they've been move. lacking in recent weeks. What a move. That was slick, quick and sisal. There's Lundstrom to Diamande. Square ball, dead centre of the park. Rolls it to the edge of the D of the St Mirren box for Sterling. And then right foot, side foot, ball to Barisic to the left in the field to John Lundstrom. Another whose future at Rangers long term is under scrutiny. As Balligan rolls it into the feet of Cantwell on the far side. Hasn't really been able to get in the game as he did at Hamden no. last week so far. Just 14 in though, nothing each. Long ball from Lundstrom this time from inside his own half the left-hand side of the St Mirren box looking for Dessers headed away though breaks to Cantwell Cantwell looking for space dummied by Sterling for Tavernier right foot cross comes in it's the one area of the box there's nobody in blue and it sails out for a throw-in on this near side to Saints cross. Yeah, yeah it's funny though but I'm talking about crosses and, and, and wingers not really having that knack or, or the, I, don't, I don't even know the the practice, I, I, I think there's a lack of practice when in the wide areas. It, the, the irony here is that the best crossers that Rangers have are their both fullbacks. I know Tavernier doesn't do well with that one there, but the last free flow, flowing move that they, they produced with the cut through St. Man was a brilliant cross from Tavernier. So well defended, I have to say, from Hemming coming out nice and brave. I feel as though you've got a wee gig as a crossing consultant coming up here. At, I'm at open to offers. Clubs. Yeah. Are you coming along for the striker for demos? <laughs> Just you fire it in. That's a, that's a, that's a, Sounds like a business plan. <laughs> the mouse and the hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Suter to Sterling on the far side, looking for Cantwell. It's straight though to Gogic, who in turn puts it straight out for a Rangers throw-in. Over on the far side, just a few yards inside their own half, and it's Lundstrom who bowls it back to Tavernier. He'll in turn go back to Jack Butland. He's made a couple of saves, important saves as well the game so far even if the offside flag may well have gone up at some point it could have gone to the far of you it could have been borderline so two important saves still has to make them it's Kilty it's, or McMenamin rather down the right hand side he's gone for goal it takes a deflection off Suter and Butland as well to smother it stays nil nil in Paisley but that's another effort on target for Saints it was great play from McMenamin but it's far too easy from a Rangers perspective the way that he was allowed to just Cut in the pitch, he gets the shot away up. What a run this is. And Silva, he's in behind, right hand side of the box, pulls the trigger. That's too a long. brilliant slide challenge by Gogic. Neil says he waited too long to pull the trigger, but Alex Gogic has made a magnificent goal saving challenge and it stays nil nil in a really action packed opening 16 and a half minutes. Well, listen, let's compliment Gogic because he's had a super season and he never gives up. He just rats all the way back, hoping that Fabio Silva's going to take his time and he did and it allowed the challenge to come but it was a wonderful run by him he takes it on his chest a lovely touch just get your next one into the grass and go and hit the target he takes another one and another one and then the challenge is made he's had a fabulous season Gogic might well not have been at the club could have no opportunities to leave in the past as Barisic swings the corner in headed away to the edge of the area controlled by Lundstrom oh, and he saved. follies it with the left foot Hemming makes the save through himself to his left 
and keeps the scoreline blank, but there's been chances at both ends of this game. As Lundstrom plays it low out to Diamonde on this left-hand side, spinning away from Strain, looking for space to cross, comes off the Aussie and behind for a Rangers corner on this near side. An important save there from him, it really was. He saw it quite late. Phil stretched his left-hand side and got really good contact on it to get it away and out of the danger area, but a better spell for this Rangers these last few minutes, looking more and more dangerous. It's a good save, it's a good take by Lundstrom. He controlled it, it in the chest and Aye. thumped it on the volley with the left foot. Good technique. He was aiming towards that right corner. Aiming, saw it a bit late as well. It's a good bit of goalkeeping. And a chance here for Rangers from the corner. It's Tavernier to take on the near side. He's rolled it low back to Cantwell's level with the edge of the D. He crosses in, away by Gogic. Tavernier perhaps now regretting not just putting that into the box. Cantwell picks it up inside his own half now, though. And he rolls it back to Butland. Cantwell's now saying that the ball's flat. That was why the cross was That's why was the cross was yeah. pure, right, OK. Yeah. Well, his manager bought it because he's asking for a new ball as well, but they're continuing with the current one at the moment. And it's launched him across the halfway line. Goes down under the challenge of O'Hara, and that's a Rangers free kick. It's left of the centre circle in the Saints' half. Just when you've got the quality of Tavernier from the set plays, let him put it in, you would think, yeah. Cantwell rolls it forward, looking for Dessers, again cut out by Gogic, he clears it, out for a Rangers throw-in on this near side, it's 0-0, almost a 19. St Mirren made such a, 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 an impressive start to the game, but Rangers have kind of grown into it a wee bit more in these last five or so minutes, and their movement getting in behind um, is starting to cause St Mirren one or two problems. Gogic, low ball, forward to Mandron, side puts it back into the centre circle for Boyd Muntz, on the turn, plays it to this near side. James Bolton will switch it onto the chest of Marcus Fraser over on that far side. Fraser playing on the left of the back three for St Mirren at the moment. As Diamonde picks up the scraps in the midfield, low ball to Tavernier and then back to Balligan, who squares it to John Souter. Will then in turn roll it along the grass out to Barisic on this near side, looking to get it over the head of Strain here for Silva. Silva is going to get onto it. Strain bites back, though. Silva now level with the penalty spot, taking it for a run to the edge of the box. More central area. Dessers has gone down off the ball. Tavernier picks up, goes for goal, and Hemming is to make the save. Tipping it over the bar on the dive, and it stays Simmeran nil, Rangers nil. And now attention will have to be given to Cyril Dessers. I thought it was a comfortable one for Hemming, but a nice little reverse from James Tavernier from outside the box. But the concern is that Dessers is going has gone down when the ball's I never got saw to anything. Did you see anything? No, he's sort of holding his shin. I don't know if he's he's twisted his knee or whatever, but he looks in a bit of discomfort. I don't know if it was in a build-up when Silva gets put into the channel and he turns back, whether he's just clashed with someone trying to get across, make a run. No. Oh, by all accounts, there's no contact at all. Oh, he's up on his feet, so he looks okay. Feet, yeah. Yeah, he looks okay. Maybe he just rolled his ankle or something. Well, it's been a long wait for St Mirren to beat Rangers in the league. We've been talking about that 2011. Their last win, all told, was in the League Cup quarters in December 2020. Conor McCarthy scored a late winner against the team that would go on to win the league in an invincible Premiership season. And as Rangers take the corner, Tavernier, it's very deep. It's headed back by Balogun and away by Boyd Muntz. Controlled it on the chest. Had time to do that before clearing with the left peg. Out to Lundstrom, who wins the throw-in on the far side off McMenamin. And Dessers makes his way back onto the pitch. Ready for this latest Rangers attack. Back with Lundstrom over on the far side. Touchline level with the penalty spot. Fires the cross in. Headed away by Gogic. Back in first time by Tavernier. Cantwell out to the right. Sterling. Sterling taking on his man, getting to the byline. Tries to pull it back there. Did he keep it in play? Well, the flag stayed down, so he did so. Similar and able to clear anyway. And out for a throw into Rangers over on the far side. They've begun to grab the game by the scruff of the neck here, the visitors. Nil-nil, yeah. nil, though. St Mirna just dropped a wee bit deeper. I see Stephen Robinson down in the touchline trying to push them up and get up. Start of the g game, St Mirna were all over Rangers with a high press, but they've just come off the game in this last wee spell and dropped off it and allow Rangers to be more comfortable on the ball. Suter going across halfway on the left of the circle out to the left touchline Barisic looks up angles the ball along the 18 yard line headed away by Fraser picked up by Cantwell down the line for Sterling back to Todd Cantwell again and then in field it comes to the Lundstrom to the edge of the centre circle for Suter 
He knocks it back out to Cantwell. He's got a bit of space to work in here. Cantwell's right foot cross comes in, but it's way too close to Hemming, who holds on. We played a quarter just about of this Premiership match. It remains in Paisley, St Mirren nil, Rangers nil. What are you saying about that cross, consultant? Poor. Damning. <laughs> As, uh, Hemming waits to launch this one forward with the right foot. Makes uh, landfall over on this near side before it's headed away by Suter on the bounce. And James Bolton returns it into the Rangers half. Barisic with a header, he's done well to find Lundstrom's chest. He then finds Tavernier, who is charging down that right-hand side. Across the halfway line goes Tavernier. Under pressure now, then he slips. And that allows St Mirren to pinch it back over on the far side through Kilty, but only momentarily because Balligan's back onto it. Balligan then slipping it down the right touchline for Sterling. That's a good challenge over there by Marcus Fraser of Sterling. Back off Fraser and out for a Rangers throw-in level with the Saints penalty spot. Aye, the, the initial spark uh, of the press, from particularly from McMenamin and, and Kilty, in support of Mandron is sort of gone. What, yeah. Approaching 25 minutes, the initial burst is just sort of... It's weakened off and it's allowed Rangers just to get a grip of the game and start having a little bit more convert, uh, uh, comfortable possession through the back line. So Mirren just seem to be dropping off into lines, Tomo, and it's, it's bringing trouble to them because Rangers are starting to feel themselves into the final third. Yeah, I mean, there's been more from Rangers today in an attacking sense in this match, more energy than we saw in the whole of the matches against County and Dundee, and that's even with St Mirren keeping them at relative arm's length. Both teams have had opportunities. I mean, next week is a massive afternoon for St Mirren when they play Dundee. Yeah. These two going head to head, that could have a. I wonder whether that's say. going to have the, the, the biggest say because, you know, last season obviously St Mirren didn't do too well post split. How many didn't points, win any of the last seven. Yeah, how many yeah. points are Dundee and St Mirren going to pick up post split? It's a big question for the match between them, might, might be pivotal. Dundee haven't beaten Celtic at Den since the late 80s, so they might be banking on the champions winning that one. But anyway, here come Rangers, Tavernier forward, Gogic with the Rowan touch, Gogic. puts it behind for the corner. Again, he's in the right place. Again, he's frustrated with his teammates, though, because it's all a little bit last ditch right now from the Cypriot. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to do a 20-yard sprint. And by the way, when I say sprint, he's flat out there. You see so many defenders sort of ambling back into position, jogging. He sprints flat out every single time. He senses danger. He's mopping up, so he's entitled to turn around and, and give a little bit of stick towards the midfield and forward areas. Barisic to take this time from the Rangers. Right, left-footed in-swinger as they attack the goal to our left. We're at the back of the main stand here, just to the right of the centre circle. In the Rangers' half as the corner comes in from Barisic, headed away by Mandron. Tavernier heads it back into the box. Mandron's onto it again. Might get a similar encounter on the go here. Kilty couldn't find them, and Rangers have it back. Dessers couldn't find Silva. It's cleared by Boyd Munch. Breaks to Barisic, who will then turn it on to halfway for Tavernier, who goes all the way back to Butland. 25 and a half on the clock. Saints nil, Rangers nil here on Sports Sound and BBC Radio Scotland on digital, online and on bbc.co.uk slash sports Scotland on the website. It is Tavernier over on the far side for Rangers, back to Balogun. Mandron for company, squares it to Suter. Straight ball forward there to Diamande. And then out to Barisic on the near side. Now Cantwell's yeah, got down off the ball. Yeah, Gogic is, I don't know if he's gone through Cantwell. Or there's just a wee bit of a coming together. But Tomo did tip this one that at times Gogic would break that back three, step in and pick Todd Cantwell up. Well, Kerridine is pitch side for us. I'm sure he'll get a replay or two of whatever went on there. The VAR's Don Robertson today. Kerridine? It's a horrendous clash there with referee Nick Walsh. It was Cantwell actually barging straight into the referee sent <laughs> flying. Gogic was there in attendance, but only as a spectator. That's why no action has been taken against anyone. We send the ref off. <laughs> What's he going to get here? Well, it'll be a, presumably it'll be... A, an uncontested drop ball and Rangers were in possession so <laughs> I see a, it. Yeah. I'm watching it there Nick, what, to be fair you've got, to, you've got to ask about the awareness of both players there 
and I'm, I'm, I'm making Nick Walsh a player in that involvement. He stayed on his feet, Nick Walsh, despite the class. <laughs> and Canwell that? didn't. Yeah. Go- <laughs> Goggy's got pinned for nothing there. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Here is Lundstrom forward to Diamonde, just drifted away from him, but he's managed to get it back, stabs it forward, Cantwell options right and left, there's us to the right, Silva to the left, it goes left, here Silva chops onto his right I side, get off you. down, he's ran into Gogic, looking for the penalty, he's smiling away as the Portuguese, but Stephen Thompson wasn't a fan of Fabio Silva's attempt at trying to win a penalty there. Well, do you know what he's got previous for it and it's just for me it's a book and it's a dive I don't know why Nick Walsh isn't getting the card out and he doesn't need to do it he, he checked inside he's in a good position just keep the ball R- runs into Gogic and just throws himself to the floor it's embarrassing I hate diving the two managers were having a go at each other there as well Stephen Robinson I raped with Fabio Silva and no wonder Philippe Clement was the man that he was able to voice his disdain at as well as the <laughs> fourth official Chris Graham <laughs> down Philippe, there Philippe Clement won't need to look very far to find something confrontational uh, I know that's pot calling the kettle black but, um, <laughs> <Good> one, <Neil. laughs> but Steve, I love wee Stevie he's so, <laughs> he's so fiery and he's he's a uh, I don't know my money's on Clement there right enough <laughs> uh, he's giving away a bit of height right enough yeah, yeah the big centre back here comes St Mirren down the right with McMenamin turns, passes it back to the 18-yard line, Mandron to the edge of the Rangers box, Mandron to Boyd Munts, he could have had a shot there potentially, he's rolled it out wide left, Tanzer with a loopy cross in, Mandron's header and over the bar, great opportunity there for St Mirren and they know it as well and it was Greg Kilty it fell to his header from about five yards out, it's gone over the bar and it stays nil nil, almost on 29. It's a brilliant chance again for St Mirren. They've been quiet for the last 15 minutes, but came to life there. The cross to the back post. Mandron, I felt as though, could have headed it himself. Chose to put it back across the six-yard line. And there was Kilty. He was just kind of behind him a wee bit, and he loops his header over the bar, but a big opportunity for St Mirren. Mandron did well there. He's got 10 goals for the season. He is their top goal scorer. As John Suter squares it to... Lundstrom now out to the right hand side for Tavernier Tavernier's under pressure from Kilty up the line for Sterling bounces out for a throw in off Tanzer says the ref though the St Mirren fans over on that far side think it should have been theirs it's been bowled back by Tavernier to Balligan who resumes at the heart of the Rangers defence today with Connor Goldson on the bench once again as he was at Hamden last week your Silva being booed by the Saints fans around about us. Now Cantwell. Cantwell then chips it towards Tavernier. Controls right of the centre circle and finds Lundstrom. And then Diamonde back to Suter. Out to Barisic. Controls in the chest. Turns it down the line for Silva. Silva then runs into Bolton. And Saints able to clear through strain. You know, do you know something, Liam? You know, um, talking about Silva going down easy, and he did, and it was it wasn't nice. Um, he's one v one in a penalty box. It's it, it's desperately what you want as a forward player. Go and take somebody on because you know that he can't overcome it or it's a penalty. But don't play into the hands of the opposition fans and stuff because I think in the, you're looking at him now. His body language is starting to slump a wee bit. I think it affects him. Barisic at the byline, left foot cross comes in, stayed in play, headed away by Tanzer. Only as far as Lundstrom over on that far side. And then Tavernier, you've been desperate for action today, Fabio Silva, after that infamous miss at Hamden last Sunday. He's been doing the rounds all week. It's Cantwell picks up from Tavernier, rolls it out wide left, Barisic, time to control, level with the penalty spot, gets the cross in, that come off a hand yeah, there. I think it's Silva it's over the bar, deflection, corner. I, thought, I think it comes off a of Bolton, oh, it ricochets almost, doesn't it? It looked like off a hand, but he doesn't know much about it. No. But you know, we've seen these things given all season. Anything's possible with handballs these days, Liam. Anything's possible. It's the deflection that's taken it off his arm, so he's not expecting it. That doesn't matter if his arm's outstretched. Yeah, I'm not even sure they're checking it, are they? They will be checking it are back checking in there. Uh, ah, it's whether they hold the game up to peruse like the it. replays. Doesn't look like it. No, no. Barisic is going to take. Short to Cantwell, level with the penalty spot, goes back to Barisic, looks up, gets the cross in this time, it's deep, it's Hemming taking a touch, he might regret that, because it's ended up in the net! 
It's been headed back across by Diamonde. Dessers was on the line to make sure. And Rangers lead on 32 minutes. St Mirren nil, Rangers won. Such a sloppy goal for St Mirren to lose. It really is. The cross comes in from Barisic deep, deep to the back post. Henning, I don't think, needs to go and make contact with it. He's at full stretch, gets a touch on it. And then he's on the ground out the game. Diamandi does really well to recycle the ball into the middle of the six-yard box. And there's Dessers with the simplest of tap-ins. Yeah, they're questioning whether it's offside or not. Diamandi's on the line. And then Dessers has knocked it in on the line. And... and and I, I watched Alex Goggins just go to the referee to say that he, he could have been offside, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, it was a really deep cross from Barisic. Diamond does ever so well just to peel around the back. It's going to get a wee look at it it's now. Not, it's not great goalkeeping. It wasn't. And I'm not sure Heming needs to make the touch, make the contact, because the ball's going out anyway. Well, the check is ongoing, so we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, well, Bolton, Bolton, I would say, is in, is in close given. succession. All right, close um, contact to Dessers. Dessers does well because he's strong enough to hold Bolton off and knock it into the net. But yeah, you're right about the goalkeeping because I think if he just gets a wee bit of communication, he can allow that just to drift out. He could have just let it go, 100%. Well, there you go, Rangers lead in a game they simply have to win. I mean, it's such a cheap concession from a St Mirren point of view. Stephen Robinson was standing down there, the bewildered look in his face after seeing that one end up in the net. And Rangers hit the front in Paisley. It is Lundstrom on the far side, it was a heavy touch there, and St Mirren managed to win it back, but the ref didn't like the challenge by Kilty. And that's going to be a free kick over on that far side. I think it's gone down as a Bolton own goal rather yeah, than a Dessers goal there. So oh, it? it is 1 0 to Rangers in any case, and it's a Bolton OG. Diamandis done brilliantly to keep that in play at the byline there. Put it into that danger area, and you just never know. Bolton, as a defender, he's got to try and attack it, but Dessers in close attendance. And unfortunately for him, it's ended up in his own net. And Rangers have a big lead here. As Lundstrom fires it back to Suter. And to be fair, Rangers had had a stranglehold in the game for quite some time at that point, going in towards the final 10 minutes of the first half here. Yeah, they had. I mean, St. made that bright start. They had that other opportunity with the header from Kilty. But out of that, Rangers have grown into the game. And a succession of corners and attempts. They really were putting St. under more and more pressure. Just one win in their last five league matches for Rangers. Their form has tailed off at just the wrong time. The business end of the season cannot afford any more slip-ups. Coming into this one, three points and five goals worse off than Celtic. Here's Barisic on the left-hand side, rolls it infield to Dessers. Back to Barisic, right football forward, looking for Silva. Headed away by Gogic. And then Bolton knocks it off Barisic and out for a St Mirren throw-in on this near side. But it'll be a, a difficult one for Stephen Robinson to take, Stephen, but it'll be yeah. one that he'll be hoping that his players can just shake off because they're very much in the game. Yeah, at 1-0, yeah, obviously still very much in the game. They've got to get in at half-time still, just the one behind and... Um, and they'll be fine for the second half, but... Here they come. The Tanzar bombing down the left, taking on Tavernier, gets the nutmeg, and Tavernier goes down, no free kick, and then Tavernier reacts brilliantly to challenge Kilty. Gogic wins it back ahead of Cantwell. No, Harris did even better to find Strain. He's got McMenamin on the right. Chance here, right-hand side of the box. McMenamin delays his cross, passes it back the way. Strain's ball blocked by Lundstrom. Strain back the way to O'Hara. The momentum has been taken out of the St. Mirren attack, but they still have it. O'Hara swings the right foot cross in. Mandron wins the header! What's in? How on earth is that by the net? St. Mirren's top scorer levels things here in Renfrewshire. It didn't look likely there as that cross looped towards him. He heads it down into the ground and it's somehow come off the post past Butland and it nestles in the net. And that is a huge goal for St. Mirren. And it's the latest blow for Rangers title hope. St. Mirren won. Rangers won on 30 
seven. I can't tell you how good a header that is. It is an absolutely brilliant header. The cross in from O'Hara. You're right, you're right, Liam. I felt as though the chance had gone out on this right hand side when they didn't put the cross in first time. It gets recycled to O'Hara. He floats across in. Mandra has so much to do to get that even on target, but he puts it in off the post. A phenomenal well, downward header. Tomo, I, I said about, if you remember, Lundstrom popped one, and I said that Dessa should bump the, de the defender to yeah, get his head yeah, on yeah. it. It's exactly what Mandron does here. He bumps Balogun and it's way in from Ahara. He just gets him shoulder to shoulder, hits him with a wee, bu a wee bump, and then you're right, what a header down into the Terrible bottom corner. I, I mean, it's under so much pressure. But his initial little body to body to Balogun just to give him that. And to get the power though for the yeah. header, because there wasn't a lot of pace in the ball either from that distance. Brilliant. So good. I, I like you thought the chance was gone. I thought McMenamin mm -hmm. should have mm -hmm. whipped it into Alex Gogic, who'd broken the box. I have to say, he's been superb for St Mirren. He's, uh, it's his impetus Gogic, coming yeah. from the back. He pinged one out of Tanza where it goes out the left side and comes back. He's continued to break it up, jumps onto Cantwell, what you said would happen, and then continues into the box. But the header, my goodness. Goodness. That's a way to hit back. That is Mandron's 11th goal of the season. And it's drawn Sinmer in level here. They'd only scored four in the last 18 league meetings with the Rangers, all top division games. And two of those came in the one game when they lost 5-2 at Ibrox last season, including one of the goals of the season from Marco Hara, who got both that day. Was he, he was the set-up man this time for Mandron, and we're back to where we started, one apiece. As Cantwell trying to wriggle away from a couple of challenges, knocks to the right-hand side of the Saints box for Tavernier. Back onto his left side, still he passes back with the right for Diamonde. It's a break of the ball, he shoots, but it's pretty tame, right through to Hemming. He'll be breathing a sigh of relief. The Rangers' lead lasted but five minutes before that Mandron equaliser. The music to the ears of the Celtic supporters making their way to Dundee for the three o'clock kick-off. They have the advantage. Rangers have yet more work to do. And it's onto the roof of the main stand. Just put a new ball on, actually. They're going to need another one. But uh, Stephen Robinson will be delighted with that, as frustrated as Philippe Clermont will be. It wasn't defended particularly well by Rangers, including at the back post. Mandron got the jump on Tavernier. Manages to find the net throw in here for Saints, Strain takes level with the Rangers 18 to O'Hara, back to Strain turning away from Silva infield to O'Hara back to Strain and good run by Bolton but the ball had just gone over the line and that will be a throw into Rangers on this near side Saints 1, Rangers 1, we're into the final 5 minutes of the opening 45 Yeah, I mean there's so much goodness uh, from the St Mirren point of view from that goal it's actually, the Tavernier get, gets run by Kilty. Liam, he, he takes him across, and Balogun ends up getting uh, no cover on the outside, which is where uh, Big Mandron is standing. But as I said, the, the bump that he gets on Balogun is really clever and, and executes the header. But you trace it back, you talk about Gogic, um, just the determination to step into play. That's where, Cantwell, that's where Cantwell should be holding it, securing it, and holding the man off, getting himself side on. He's too easily pushed out of the way, and this is where it all uh, is created from. I talk about Silva. He's dropped right off since he's taken that dive. He's gone right off the game. He's just disappeared. He doesn't look like a £35 million player, that's for sure, as Cantwell is brought crashing to the ground by Gogic. And it will be a Rangers free kick about level with the edge of the D of the Saints box on this left-hand side. A chance for them to load the box this time. Suter and Balogun are making their way into the St Mirren penalty area. Liam, it's been accused of Rangers before. They go one up against Ross County and they don't dominate the game properly. They don't control it properly. They were in a large period of that match where they were they were, they were the dominant force after a bright start from St Mirren. They get themselves in front. That's when you just kill the game and make St Mirren run. They've allowed them back into the game. They need to step it back up again. Barisic to take. Tavernier's there as well. Huge gap right in that penalty spot there where it should, that's exactly where Barisic will try and feed it into. Dessers interested, Lundstrom, Silva all in there, Barisic swings it in, it's another good delivery, headed away by Mandron, Cantwell shoots for goal and it comes right through to Hemming who holds on. The bounce into the ground took any power in the shot away and it's in the gloves of Zach Hemming. 
he'll be mightily relieved Mandarin's bailed him out. It will be, yeah. He's had a good season as Hemming, but that was poor goalkeeping for the Rangers goal, no doubt. One apiece, Dundee Celtic to come. Two big games on Sports Sound this afternoon. 1 1 in the first. Fell by Strain and Cantwell. Nick Walsh, the ref, wants to speak to the Simmerin player. James Bolton is going over to speak to the ref. I didn't think there was a lot in it, if I'm being honest. No. I mean, he's entitled to challenge for the ball, can't we? He's just got there first. Free kick. Rangers just inside their own half. On this near side, Lundstrom over it. Side foot forward to Cantwell, back to Lundstrom. He goes back to Souter. And he goes back to Jack Butland, whose hopes of a 26th clean sheet of the season have gone. That Mandron goal there, first against Rangers this season, St Mirren. It's over on the far side with Scott Tanzer, who clears into the Rangers half, breaks to Tavernier, who finds Lundstrom to Souter, back to Butland, and then to Barisic. Our Rangers going to spill points for a tenth time in the league this season. Breaks back to Butland, they've got plenty of time to dig themselves out of the hole, but they found themselves in way too many holes for their manager's liking in the league in recent times. Stavernier comes down the right, infield to Sterling, gets the break of the ball, the right angle of the box, looking for space to cross perhaps, goes to the byline, it's cut out. Sterling puts it in rather than accept the corner and Hemming holds on under his crossbar. The high ball into the box and it stays Saints 1, Rangers 1, approaching 44 minutes. Yeah, they're not being any rush here, St Mirren, getting in at half-time, one each. It's a great result for them. Working a plan for the second half. They've played well of St Mirren. Obviously, Rangers have a lot of possession, as you'd expect. And St Mirren have had to suffer a bit in terms of um, the amount of corners they've had to give away. But they've defended well and they've looked a threat at times. And a foul by Barisic on this near side of McMenamin. And now the ref wants to speak to the Rangers' left back. And St Mirren have a chance to float the ball into the Rangers' box. So in the final minute of the 45, there's going to be two, as it stands, added on at the end of it. Barisic gets a word of warning only and Greg Kilty is over this St Mirren free kick real opportunity this perhaps for Saints against what's been a shaky Rangers defence of late Greg Kilty right footed bends it in, it's a deep delivery again towards O'Hara, wins the header chance here for St Mirren it's gone over the crossbar with Scott Tanzer in fact, it's James Bolton who's got his head in his hands. He's the yeah. one who's had the opportunity. He stabbed for goal, and it's been blocked by a defender inside the six-yard box, and it's a Saints corner. It stays 1-1. That looked 2-1 St Mirren all day long. Is it John Suter that gets a, a touch on it? I'm not I sure. I thought it was Butland. I thought it was Butland that saved save, it. it right? It's an incredible save, actually, I think. But I have to say, Mark O'Hara is one of the biggest targets. He's so good in the air. He's wheeling round the back. He's free. Does ever so well to knock it back across goal. Neil will get a replay of it on a delay in front of him if he's able to see it it's coming up but anyway there'll be a corner to St Mirren here an opportunity to swing it in again towards the back post Mandon's underneath it once more is it still in play St Mirren yeah they've kept it in through McMenamin but it's going to be clear by Diamande O'Hara wins the header nods it out to McMenamin St Mirren spilt smell blood here and it's McMenamin on the right with the cross cut out by Barisic and right through to Butland and it stays Simmer in one, Rangers one. I think it was a save. I've just had one look at it. Um, it's not a great angle I've got here. I have to save this three screen in front of me, but it looks like Jack Butland again. It is, That's a brilliant, it's a brilliant save. save. Wow. Yeah, he's going the other way. He, he just flicks his hand up. It's so reactive. Bahara does so well. Bolton gets a lot on it. I have to. I, I mean, he's not. He's not just a little skiff. He's really caught it flush. Jack Butland sees it so so late going down onto his left knee and gets his right arm up. Brilliant save. And a good first half has been yeah. pretty entertaining that's for sure I tell you what that would have been met with a chorus of boos from the Rangers fans had that found a net and got in at half time 2-1 down they are that's under, a big team talk yeah, they are under incredible duress here come to one of the more difficult venues is the visiting side it's another new ball we're needing here what is going on with the balls it's about the fifth ball they've changed over yeah. there's going to be a St Mirren ball here 
for Zach Hemming. He's in no hurry at the moment. We've just about played the two minutes that somebody, were added. Somebody on the St Mirren ground staff will be uh, feeling the heat right now. Generally, the young boys are, are, are normally charged with the task yeah. of making sure the balls are blown up for the match day. Somebody will be hiding. Hemming with the free kick, long ball forward, headed away by Suta. We're into a third minute of stoppages. Nick Walsh sounds the half-time whistle and brings to an end a really entertaining game here in Paisley in the first half. Rangers led through a ball to no G. Diamonde did well to knock it back across the face after an unconvincing goalkeeper by Zach Hemming. And it came off Bolton last under pressure from Dessers. And Rangers had the lead, but it lasted fewer than five minutes. Mikel Mandron headed Simmer and level. A loopy ball in by O'Hara. Butlin's made some great saves. Hemming's made some saves as well. It's gone from one end to the other. Rangers dominated for about a 20-25 minute period. But St Mirren are here to play. They've got their own prize that they've got their eye on. Rangers gunning for the title. But as it stands, they're dropping another two points. And it would be the 10th time this season they've done so. They've got 45 minutes to try and win the match and put pressure on Celtic, who are at Dens later on, live in Sportsound as well. But at halftime in Paisley, it is St Mirren 1, Rangers 1. On digital radio, FM, online at BBC Sport Scotland, your smart speaker, and BBC Sounds. This is Sport Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. Scottish football lives here. A lot has been moving in a very short period of time. It was a gamble. It's been a gamble for the First Minister. Guiding you through the stories making the news. Running a minority government in this parliament means doing deals. The issues that matter to us all. Action on tackling climate change. What kind of childhood is it that we're looking for our children? And that makes chocolate obviously more expensive. Yeah. What will they come for next? <laughs> <laughs> Wake up to Good Morning Scotland. Listen to Lunchtime Live from noon. Head home with Drive Time. A veteran of the fish market. Jimmy, good evening to you. Even if you sneeze, you may finish up <laughs> buying something you don't want. The stories that just have to be told. Weekdays on BBC Radio Scotland and Sounds. This is Sports Time with me, Richard Gordon. We have just brought you an all-action first 45 minutes from Paisley. It is St Mirren 1. Rangers won at the interval. It's a three o'clock kickoff at Dens Park later with a full live commentary of that one as well. Dundee against Celtic. And you can see the highlights from both matches, extended highlights tonight at 7.15 on the BBC Scotland channel, as well as the best of the action from the four games that took place yesterday, which we can look back on a little bit later. Um, quite a few things resolved up and down the divisions yesterday. We can uh, review everything that has happened over the course of the weekend, but of course still plenty to unfold in these two matches. Um, well, Stephen Thompson, Simon, they're going to be absolutely delighted with their first half performance, aren't they? They are. I felt as though they started the game with a real purpose. They started the game very well and aggressively and got after Rangers and unsettled Rangers um, until about the kind of 15th minute mark and Rangers started to grow into the game um, and, you know, put Simon under pressure, corners, efforts and goal. Uh, then they get the goal, which was slack from St Mirren. I really do think that Zach Hemming could have let it just go out for the corner or for the goal kick, but he doesn't. Uh, and uh, St Mirren uh, Rangers get the goal. You're thinking then St Mirren just need to hold on, get at half time, 1 0 down, still in the game. But then they scored a fantastic goal, a really, really good goal. And after that, you have to say St Mirren were putting Rangers under a lot of pressure there. Uh, uh, towards the half-time whistle. I think it's been a great St Mirren performance. Yeah. I think Rangers have been not bad. I think they've got a, a few more le levels and gears that they can go through, but Stephen Robinson will be absolutely delighted with his team's performance. And the one thing that they are doing is that asking questions. They've had seven efforts and goal, five on target to Rangers, two on target. Um, despite Rangers having a lot of the ball, um, St Mirren have looked a real threat. Rangers looked a wee bit suspect defensively. Um, but the goal itself was just a phenomenal header. It really, really was um, a difficult header to get the pace that he does on the ball, the accuracy, and as Neil said, um, to be able to hold the defender off, that wee nudge. Uh, it's just a, a brilliant goal from Mandron for his eighth league goal of the season. Um, and it's a big team talk now at halftime for both managers, but for Philippe Clement especially, he'll be looking for more from uh, his Rangers side in this second half, absolutely. It's not just the fact they've created more chances, it's the quality of chances they've created. They've, they've done a really good job, yeah. haven't they, in carving out the openings. 
they have done and you know they set the tone right at the start of the game when uh, Mandron nicked it off to Avenir and he gets that angled shot good save from Butland the save at the end there from Butland's phenomenal the reactions oh, to get the yeah. to get the hand up and flick it over the bar then you know it's run of a a header over the bar they probably should have done better with another man drawn shot the deflected shot that Butland did well to gather so yeah I mean they're looking a real real threat sitting there and, and it's, when you play against Rangers sometimes you don't get a lot of opportunities in the game and you've got to be clinical when the chances come round but you know Sitmarn have created more chances in this game than I've seen them create against um, Rangers in the past and they'll just be hoping that you can keep that going in the second half because you wouldn't bet against uh, Sitmarn scoring uh, another goal in the second half absolutely not the way that they're playing at Neil Rangers without a win in the last three league matches uh, again this afternoon they've gone in front but very quickly have given the lead yep. away um, what is it they're lacking right now? that's a concern Richard that they don't have the, the control um, to deal with certain things I, I, I felt that they really started to dominate that period midway, after it got about 20 minutes you could see the spark had come out of St Mirren's press they were starting to get into better areas but when they get themselves in front and it's a big mistake I think from him because I think he could have dealt with it much better I just yeah. allowed it to go out but full mark to Diamond again round the back but as soon as they get themselves in front it should have been a it should have been a message being passed around the side right this time, it's not a Ross County. We get ourselves right, we make sure we take the sting out the game if we need to, uh, and control this initial period after we've just scored. But they didn't do that. And if anything, I felt that Mirren showed a wee bit more aggression. I spoke about Fabio Silva going down easy. That, that's not good enough. I mean, he can't keep on getting told. Fel uh, I mean, I, I've, I've got to say, Neil, in his panoply of play acting, it wasn't the worst. No, um, it's not. But, but, that, but it was a clear dive. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not the point. I'm not. I'm not saying it was a you know a disgusting dive. I'm just talking about it's too easy. Yes. This is when you want your your forward players to actually just say right the tails up. And I know older players when they're doing punditry stuff, when they move into this area, they stay on my time and all the rest of it. But think about forward players in general, thinking, right, this is where you really start to put your chest out and say, we're going to put you to the sword. We're going to just stand you up here. I'm going to stand you up and I'm going to, because I've got you perfect. As Gogic is, um, is on, the, on the, the, the recovery check. I'm going to just go and punish you. I'm going to eliminate you 1v1 here in the box. If you get it wrong, then you'll take me out. If you don't, I'm through and go. It's almost like too easy. And Gogic is the one player that I think has grabbed this game with a scruffy neck at times by his, by his uh, impetus, by his aggression, by his natural enthusiasm. He breaks the pitch up um, with Todd Cantwell. When I said there, Richard, I'm looking for much more... Uh, strength of play, much more uh, leadership, and you don't need to be a leader in terms of going about and grabbing people or shouting at people and crunching into tackles. Leadership is taking taking hold of the ball, doing what you're supposed to do, and he's got to make sure that he gets himself in front of Gogic in that period, period of play. If you, you trace that goal back, that's where I'm going to. Gogic steps yeah, in. He, absolutely, he does. Yep, yeah, wins the ball, forceful play. plays it out to the left, uh, and then it gets to the left, and then it works its way across the right. I think McMenamin should cross it. He doesn't. It comes back to Ahara he thinks right I'm going to make Rangers defend Kilty runs James Tavenier across the penalty spot and then it's about um, Mandron's strength so they don't control the game for me Rangers properly when they get themselves uh, in a position where they're in the lead it's either taking a sting out of it or showing real dominance and making the, the, the other team defend properly there's just a bit of vulnerability and I just wonder whether there's a, a little bit of a weakness there in the strength of character of some of those players. Philippe come on, I think it's furious. I watched him spin on his heels and get down the tunnel. And I think he'll be, he'll be making sure that the message is that it needs to be upped massively in the second half because this St Mirren team are well capable of scoring again like Stevie says there but so are Rangers I don't think Sterling's done anything Richard no, of no, no you know he's been put out in that position and he gives you a wee bit of strength and maybe a, a, maybe some more structure in the game but I felt they could have changed maybe at times where Sterling just drops and lets Tamir get up higher in a position but I think it's crying out for McCausland I, I, I really do I'm McCausland uh, dare I say it, maybe a, a Tom Lawrence coming into the game where he can go beyond people but they need more Rangers because they can't afford to drop any more points drop more points today I don't see Celtic dropping any at Dens and the, and the league will be over well well, of course um, if Rangers do drop anything and, and Celtic um, do win and then indeed win next week then you've got that Rangers-Celtic game or Celtic-Rangers game at Celtic Park which 
despite the SPFL generally um, having making their best efforts to avoid it, it mm-hmm. would be a title decider, which uh, I'm sure Rangers do not want to be going to Celtic Park with the potential of uh, conceding the title there. Um, just that there was one utterly bizarre moment in the first half to uh, Cantwell, Todd Cantwell and Nick Walsh collided. I mean, maybe no surprise that Nick bounced straight back up but Todd Cantwell <laughs> remained on the ground. Um, but I, I think he thought that it was Gogic who did, had yeah. caught him because he was, he was saying to Nick Walsh, I think Nick Walsh had to say to him, look, it was me. It was me that tripped you up. Yeah, it was totally bizarre. You're right. And it was, uh, Cantwell was looking for Gogic to, and he, he was trying try to say to Nick Walsh, look, that's a first but he didn't realise it was Nick Walsh that had uh, banged into him but yeah again again, um, I don't think the contact was enough to put him on his backside no, fair play to Nick Walsh for um, for um, showing great powers of recovery. Um, so it's um, this feels very like that that game in Dingwall, doesn't it? A couple of weeks ago, when when County, although Rangers had gone in front in the first half, County actually were playing some very good football and causing real problems for Rangers. And they of course came out flying after the interval. Cameron did get back in level terms before the break this time round. Uh, a big team talk for for both sides. I guess Stephen Robinson just looking for more of the same, isn't he? It will be. Yeah, he'll be delighted with his team's performance, especially the amount of chances that they've created. Um, I think that teams when they're playing against Rangers at this moment in time sense a vulnerability sense that you're going to be able to get opportunities that defensively Rangers aren't looking as strong as they did certainly in the um, earlier part of Philippe Clement's time at the club Um, and you believe that the players will believe that they can create chances and as I said a, a, a couple of minutes ago normally when you're playing against the old firm teams you might only get one or two sniffs in a game and you've got to be so clinical so I'm a wee bit surprised at the amount of chances that Sitman have managed to fashion here through good football some of them and some of them through slackness from Rangers but the, the um, team talk for, from Stephen Robinson will just be more of the same get after Rangers um, they're not enjoying it when you uh, ask them to defend they're going to put balls in their box um, when you look at the bench for St Mirren we were kind of discussing at the start of the game with all you sign you have started um, but that's a weapon that St Mirren have got that they can bring on as the mm. game goes on yeah. Mandron's done well I think he's put himself about he's three efforts on goal he scored a fabulous header but as the game goes and legs start to get tired it's a great weapon to bring on as all you sign you later in the game I do think that Rangers will be looking to their bench Neil's right for me I'd, as much as I like Sterling I think he's a, a great footballer and uh, I just think on that right hand side he's not given Rangers the, the threat that uh, Ross McCausland would um, coming on so I've been surprised to see McCausland coming on to the game Dessers has been largely anonymous throughout the game um, so you've got Roof there as well possibly coming on so Rangers have a lot of options that they can look to from the bench but they do have to up it they, ha- they have to realise the situation they're in and, and that is that you know as Neil pointed out if you lose more points you know, you can kiss goodbye to any chance of winning the league. So they've got to realise this situation that they're in. Um, and for the last few weeks, it seems, seems like they've kind of not take away the cup semi-final um, performance and victory in the league. Uh, the performances haven't been up there. They haven't been good enough. And I wonder whether it's the pressure of knowing how close they are to a league title. And these games are running out. You're looking at four games now. They know they've got to go to Parkhead and get a result. Is it starting to eat away at the players, the mentality? Um, because the pressure is absolutely huge and it's going to take some big, big characters in that change room to stand up to it. When you look around the Rangers team, I think Lundstrom's working really hard to get on the ball, as is Diamandi through the middle, but we've spoken how, how there's a lack of space here because Kilty uh, and McMenamin on this side and Boyd Munson and O'Hara are getting a really squeeze in the game and they're doing well at that. So, But th- there has been a little bit more space for them um, after that 25-minute, half-an-hour period. But... Your forward players are so important. Now, take Todd Cantwell aside, because he's trying to find a pocket in there. He should be sitting in there behind Boyd Munns and O'Hara. You're looking then from impact from your forward players. Now, the space is always because of uh, McMenamin and Kilty Richard are narrowing up. They're trying to make it difficult for Rangers to play through. So then your space has to be in the wing-back areas. That means a wee bit of bravery from Tavernier to get in a half position. Not too high, not too low. Both of them just to get up into an area really wide. Then you're looking for your wide players, Silva and Sterling. Sterling isn't going to offer you that in that wide position. He's not an attacking-minded player. And Silva, I think after that initial going down easy, has disappeared. 
largely disappeared. So you're needing, so your two players down effectively. This is why he needs more from Silva, and I think maybe a change, whether it's a Scott Wright, whether it's a McCausen coming into that position to offer you a much more threat. Then you ask more questions of the St Mirren backline. Gogic has been superb. Not only is he Marshall and the other two boys Bolton, he's sending Bolton out when it's a uh, time to go and he's sending um, Fraser out on the other side he's controlling everything then, it's, then Dessers then he has to do more it's Tom was saying his movement I think has been a wee bit static come into one side drift in and that means that then the, the, the other wide position can be filled through the, the centre forward there's so many things you can do and this is why I said Richard I love the tactical battle of a game of football and it's when the other coach gets asked certain questions can you come up with something and if he passes information on to combat that then the players need to take responsibility and just now they're not doing it it's going to be a fascinating second half uh, incidentally it's looking like uh, Rangers against Hearts Scottish Women's Cup final 2-0 for Hearts against Spartans in the second of the semi-finals Kate Mooney had scored just before half time uh, Kathleen McGovern has scored just short of the hour mark Spartans nil Hearts 2 still to come 3 o'clock kick-off it is Dundee against Celtic we we'll look back on all the action from yesterday as well but right now a match 45 minutes ahead for both sides it is St Mirren 1 Rangers 1 as we return to Stephen Thompson, Neil McCann and Liam McLeod the Rangers haven't won any of the last three league games Celtic, Ross County, Dundee they are all square here, they haven't gone four league matches without winning since Mark Warburton was the manager in their first season back in the Premiership and did it twice that campaign but the most recent one saw them lose 4-1 at Hearts drew 1-1 at home with Ross County before losing at Dundee and Cali Thistle as St Mirren get the second half underway in their black and white stripes right to left as we watch from the back of the main Rangers all in blue this afternoon with the white flashes and they'll go left to right shooting towards the northern end of the stadium where their supporters are housed Big pressure on these Rangers players. Samirin, as it stands, perhaps before a ball was kicked, would have taken a point from this one in their battle for fifth. But here they come now. Kilty, Suter gets a really important touch onto it because McMenamin was in behind. Butlin flops down in the ball. But an early sign of intent there from Saints early in the second half. Very much like the start to the first half, Liam. It was a good spot and a ball over the top. And you're right, it was a very, very important intervention from... John Suter just getting a toe to that. Silva's a judge to have fouled O'Hara over on the far side. It's quite remarkable that, Neil. Well, I just mentioned the last time they went four without a win in the league. All the problems they've had since then, the Cachinha days and in more recent times under Van Bronckhorst and Beale, it's been that length of time since they last went four without a victory. It's important, that, so important for them. This. Well, listen, it's incredible. And what about your timing? To pick this time to do that, it's, it's unreal. And considering the, the, the transformation since Philippe Clement to come in, turning that big deficit into their favour, um, and then just to go in that horrible run it's such bad timing and it's come straight off the back of an 11 match winning run which was their best in over three decades as a top flight club it is Lundstrom getting a free kick at the edge of his own box and playing it short to Suter it is a monumental second half this for Rangers it's funny, I'm watching Liam, I'm watching Philippe come on telling Sterling to get higher, to get higher, to earn Tavenier more space. That's what I was talking to Richard about. But he's not natural at it. He's been cajoled into doing yeah. it. No changes for either team at the interval there. Hemming and goal for Saints, Fraser, Gogic, Bolton, Strain, Tanzar, O'Hara, Boyd, Munts, McMenamin, and Kilty and Mandran. For Rangers, Butlin in goal, Tavernier, Balligan, Suter, Barisic, Diamondi, Lundstrom, Cantwell, Sterling, Silva, Dessers. Suter underneath it at the back here. First time to Balligan, but he's put it straight out for a Saints throw in. It's going to be on this left hand side, just a bit level with the edge of the centre circle in the Rangers half. And Marcus Fraser is over it, playing on his left side, which isn't his favoured side. And it's Fraser who will bowl it infield to Mandron, then to Fraser. Fraser, then with a looping ball towards the edge of the penalty area, is headed away by Barisic. Shohara has it. Simiran will try again here. It's going to be picked up on that right hand side by St Mirren down the line it's McMenamin back onto the touchline to strain 
Now McMenamins, good play by St Mirren. Barisic trying to stick with him. Lundstrom sees it behind though for the goal kick and it remains one apiece, 48. Another bright start from St Mirren. The second half, intensity's there again. You'd expect Rangers will grow into the second half like they did the first, but Stephen Robinson will be really pleased with the opening three minutes of this half. Balligan for Rangers, square ball to Suter. To the left of the centre circle, into the St Mirren half, low ball, out to Barisic on the left-hand side, low as well, looking for Dessers, it goes down, no free kick though. Cogic. the referee, it was Cogic with the challenge, Dessers has stayed down, the Rangers fans upset, that oh. wasn't given as a free kick at the edge of the St Mirren penalty area. It's a really good ball, right, and it's a brilliant take from Dessers, but Gogic is literally standing about two centimetres away and just blocks him. I mean, he can't go anywhere, he can't move, he's just run into him because he's close attention, but so good from Gogic. Silva wins it off Mandran, hits it first time, the long ball looking for Dessers, Gogic chasing after him, Dessers has it, couldn't quite get away from Gogic, sticks to his guns over on the far side, holds Dessers up, allows Absolute teammates rash. back. Now it's Diamonde, Diamonde looks up at the goal, has a go, takes a deflection, headed away by Fraser. Now Lundstrom picks it up in the midfield, out to Diamonde, Barisic to the left in the touch line, he's given it away, Samira Nave back with McMenamin, driving down the right-hand side, he's only got Kilty ahead of him at the moment, still he has it, McMenamin down the touch line, under pressure from Diamonde, McMenamin wins the throw in, no, it's gone the other way, it's the assistant who's got the best view inside Samira Park of it, but the Saints fans over there are irate that that's gone Rangers' way, level with their own 18-yard line. He did really well, McMenamin, to travel with the ball 50, 60 yards down that right-hand side. I think Diamondi just poked it off his toe. You can see why the St. Mirren fans would have thought it would be a St. Mirren throw in, but they've got the ball back now anyway. Mandron goes down, no free kick. And again, the St. Mirren fans are upset. Here's Gogic picking it up in the midfield, flashing it forward. It breaks back Rangers' way, though. Now it's with Cantwell, and they're going to hit the counter here. Sterling drive in, down the throat of the pitch, finds Dessers, a dreadful ball by Dessers. He's tried to play it back to Sterling, and Fraser can put it out for a throw-in. That, that was on for Rangers Yeah, there. it was really poor, really poor. They had a 3v3 virtually on the counter-attack. They were breaking its speed. The ball goes to Dessers. He can either take a touch, but it goes for the first-time pass. Really, really slack, straight into St Mirren Suter driving forward now Silva out to Barisic on that left hand side looked up at the penalty area thought about the early cross finds Silva instead gets it past the first defender but his touch takes it right through to Keelan Boyd Munts who gets it away and now it's O'Hara out to the right hand side and McMenamin Mandron and Kilty ahead of him goes back down the line to Ryan Strain now O'Hara to McMenamin challenged by Lundstrom out for a St Mirren throw in over on the far side, and the St fans' reaction is dripping in sarcasm as a decision goes their way. There's just a wee bit of a, a breakdown in communication happening here with Rangers players. I, 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 as much as I've gone on about Fabio Silva not being in it in the first half, he's played a nice little ball. He should expect his number nine to be across that side of the box to bounce pass. This is a standing left side of where he should be and the ball is then just hoovered up by the, the St Mirren back line but they're just a wee bit disjointed a few points of the fingers at each other why you're not there why you should be here sort of stuff happening amongst them they need to get together again they haven't really had anyone taking responsibility on the pitch no. in recent times Diamonde picks it up St Mirren can make nothing of the throw in the attacking position and it's worked out to this right hand side Tavernier across halfway being held up by Kilty Back into his own half for Balligan, stabs it forward, he's given it straight to Boyd Munts, he's trying to get Mandron away. Balligan read it though, he's got it back to his keeper. And it's Butland playing it short to John Souter. And it's still 1-1 here, 52 on the clock. Those two goals in the first half, the Bolton OG and the Mandron header. And 1-1 it is in Paisley, Diamonde poking it to Balligan. Tavernier on the touchline, it's not a great ball by Balligan, Tavernier's done really well to keep it in play, Saints fans in the main stand felt that had gone out, long ball towards the St Mirren penalty area, Silva, left hand side of it, the ref blows the whistle against Fabio Silva, and that's going to be a free kick to St Mirren just at the end of their own box, it is Saints 1, Rangers 1. Just a wee nudge from Silva, two hands on the back of uh, Strain, I think it was, back, just gave him a wee push, not really necessary. 
points they've made in their 23 league games without a win over Rangers that's a record in this fixture the last game saw the previous record of 22 beaten which had stood since 1911 to 1922 they're down to 10 at the moment because Conor McMenamin's come over for a change of footwear they have Samirin free kick at the edge of their own box Hemming with it right footed long ball into the Rangers half Mandron goes up there so too does Suter who wins it Silva on the overhead ball into the midfield is won back by Boyd Munts and now it's with Tanzar along with the left foot down this near side headed away by Tavernier Balogun gets on to it, controls in the chest, under pressure. And he eventually settles at the feet of Cantwell. Now Sterling. Sterling with a pirouette, but he runs into Tanzer, who has it back for St Mirren. Tanzer infield for Mandron. Tanzer's gone down. St Mirren free kick out on this near side. Midway inside Rangers territory. Philippe Clement with a head shake down yeah, below us. I think there'll be a sub happening soon, very soon, with Sterling coming off and McCausen coming on, but... They just uh, look out of sorts. There's a lot more aggression um, in St Mirren's play. I think, as we've been touching on at half-time, I think they, they sniff a little bit of vulnerability, a bit of softness about Rangers just now. Connor Goldson's just made his way back to the dugout as well. Free kick St Mirren. Keelan Boyd Munts is over it on the left hand side, just a couple of feet from the near side touchline. Midway inside Rangers territory, swings it in with the left foot into the box, headed away by Balligan, picked up by McMenamin on the far side, the Saints number 10. Works it into the midfield, looking for a 1 2. He's going to get a throw in at least over on the far side. But Kerradine can bring us news and confirmation of what Neil McCann was just talking about. Yeah, Philippe Clement hasn't even waited 10 minutes, has he, since the start of the second half? And it's Fabio Silva who comes off to the loud jeers of the St Mirren fans all around the ground. The Ross McCausland will come on to see if he can inject some impetus to Rangers down that flank. Well, I saw during the week, Neil, that Rangers, there was a couple of lone players were in this piece that I was reading. It was Silva and Sima, and they were saying, you know, that would be Sima that would be the one they'd be looking to get in the permanent deal. Why yeah. is that even a debate? Uh, I mean, so I'm so actually surprised at the sub because I thought it was Sterling coming off. But McCausland will go out to the left now, it looks like. I wonder whether Cantwell might go up to the left. And um, Sterling will go into the middle of the park and, and come McCausland to the right. But I'm surprised that Sterling's still in the pitch and, um, because I, I, it looked like Philippe Clement wasn't particularly happy with him asking for a lot more in terms of a forward impetus. But he's... He's taken Silva off as being anonymous. He's waited 10 minutes into the second half before rolling the dice as the Rangers manager. Long cross-field ball for St Mirren comes off the head of Tavernier. Saints have a throw-in, level with the edge of the D of the Rangers penalty area on this left-hand side as they attack the goal to the left. Tanzar is over it. Back up the line is Marcus Fraser. He's getting a little bit of movement from Boyd Munz. He's on to it now, under pressure from Diamande. Dinks it down the line and off the knee of Sterling and out for a throw into St Mirren, who will fancy winning this game, given Rangers' issues, Rangers' form, Rangers' on-field demeanour. In comes the cross for St Mirren, into the box, allowed to bounce, headed up into the air by McMenamin and then cleared eventually by Diamande, picked up on the right by Strain under pressure from McCausland. Strain still has it, he's done well, he rolls it back the way to Bolton, into the midfield for Boyd Munts. Now it's with Gogic who finds Fraser, left of the centre circle. Steps away from Dessers and Sterling, but he's given it away, and Balogun pushes it forward to Dessers, but Gogic again is there to slam the door in the face of Cyril Dessers. And it's back with Zach Hemming who clears first time with the right foot. Yeah, it's a brilliant read from Gogic, right, but... As a striker, Stevie, do you not just make sure he secure possession? You don't first? take your touch. You take your touch. He doesn't even know where Gogic is, and he tries to let it through his body. Secure the ball. Take your touch. Get your team up the pitch. John Lundstrom. It's one-one in Paisley. Fifty-seven on the clock. Lundstrom plays it short to Cantwell, who's not been able to get into the game like he did against Hearts at the National Stadium. Balligan picks up out to Sterling on this near side. It's not just a league title on the line for Rangers just now, it's a treble. That's what's on the line for them between now and the end of the campaign. And their hopes of wrestling the title off Celtic are in trouble as Dessers picks up left-hand side of the box where he fires it across the six-yard area and harmlessly behind for the goal kick and it stays one apiece. His movement was better there, Neil. You know, it was. He, he makes the run in behind, but it's the wrong decision for me. The shot at that angle was virtually impossible to test Hemming in the submitting goal just 
keep the ball, link it, but uh, he tries to get a shot away in his left foot, out for the bye kick for St Mirren. Long ball forward by Hemming into the Rangers half, headed away by Balligan. McCausland nods it forward. Look at Verdesers cut out by Bolton. Down the right hand side, chance here for Ryan Strain. Perhaps is in behind McCausland. He goes down. St. Mirren free kick. Foul by McCausland. And this is in a really good position for Saints. It is, and the delivery into the box has been really good so far this afternoon. It was clumsy from McCausland just getting back, bars into the back of Ryan Strain. Clear free kick. A really good opportunity for St. Mirren to put this into a dangerous area. Throng of players along the 18-yard line in black and white and blue. St. Mirren free kick. Kilty with it, right-footed, bends it in, Mandarin attacks it, headed away by Balligan. So important he got to that. And then Tavernier wallops it forward down this near side. Long, high clearance. Bouncing ball, strain under pressure from Dessers, who mistimes his jump, makes it easier for Strain, who passes it forward straight to Tavernier, whose first time ball forward comes to the edge of the Simmerin box where Zach Hemming is. And he smashes it forward. We are approaching the hour mark in Paisley. 1-1 as it stands, Rangers dropping more points. And give Celtic the opportunity to potentially move five clear with just four games to go. And a superior goal difference as well. As Sterling gives chase, he gets away from Fraser who reacts well and it eventually comes back to Zach Hemming. His right-hand side of his box plays it low down the line. It's brilliantly done. Sweeper keeping by Hemming. And down the line for Strain, who finds O'Hara, right of the centre circle. Massive switch of play by O'Hara, looking for Kilty. Tavernier wins the header, and out it goes for a St Mirren throw-in. Once again, Rangers not playing like a side with a title on the line. It's been really poor from Rangers this second half so far. Really, really poor. They don't look like they've got any cohesion in the team. Nobody's standing up and taking a grip of the game in a Rangers shirt. Rangers in possession wide on the left, McCausland into the Saints half for Diamande, trying to turn away from Bolton. I'm watching Todd Cantwell. To I'm, I'm watching Todd Cantwell. He, he's, he's pointing out, I'll put it there, put it there. He's just walking at times onto Alex Gogic, and Alex Gogic then doesn't even have to look for him or step in. He needs to find himself space and be clever, either drop a little bit shorter or go and stand in a wide position and let Ross McCausland pick it up deeper and run at people. Just now he's been... He's, I mean, Gogic is standing in a, in a central position of a three and he's going and standing up against them Rangers in possession with Diamandi just near to the centre circle low ball out to the left for Barisic dinks it down the line for McCausland good defending again by James Bolton recovered really well psychologically as well as his performance physically on the pitch today from conceding the own goal in the first half it is St Mirren on the ball on the right hand side across the halfway line goes strain and he wins the throw and off Lundstrom and Philip Clement is the very embodiment of frustration oh, down below us his face is fizzing absolutely fizzing probably be looking to his bench again soon I would imagine to try and inject something into this performance from Rangers that is yeah. bang average Honestly, I'd be, I'd be contemplating taking uh, Sterling off, but getting, I'd even put Cantwell to the left and bring McCausen to the right and get Tom Lawrence into the middle of the park that he can go beyond people, get into the box, have another attacking thrust from the middle of the park because Todd Cantwell is playing in there with his back to goal and offering nothing at him, and neither is Dijon Sterling. Rangers have it with Sterling back to Tavernier. He goes back to Souter. Get news of a change from Kerradine in a moment here. 62 played, one apiece in Paisley. Lundstrom playing the ball out to Sterling. Can't find Tavernier and St Mirren have it back here. Kilty's barged to the ground by Sterling. And that will be a free kick to St Mirren out on this near side. Now this is, Richard mentioned it at half time, this has got serious shades of that Ross County game two weeks ago. And if Rangers aren't careful, they could end up losing this one. Neither team are creating much at this minute in the game. But that's fine for St Mirren. A one-all draw against Rangers would be a good result. Rangers have to win this match, and they're not putting St Mirren under any pressure at all. Kerry it's sand change. Yes, yeah, St Mirren, I mean, their work rate so far in the opening 62 and a half, nearly 63 minutes has been phenomenal. They're going to bring on Toyosi Olasanya maybe to help out up front and relieve some of the pressure because there's tired legs out there. 
Long free kick into the Rangers box is headed partially away. Eventually Diamonde gets to the edge of the box, looks to fire it into the feet of McCausland, but it's going to go out harmlessly for a throw-in over on the far side. Ryan Strain sees it over the line. It'll be a St Mirren throw-in over there. The team use at Dense Park is in Dundee. McCracken is in goal. McGee, Portales, Lamy, Dodgson. McCowan, who's captaining the team, Sila, Mulligan, Boateng with Tiffany and Bakayoko up front. James Forrest starts for Celtic. With Hart and goal, Johnston, Carter, Vicker, Scales, Taylor, McGregor, O'Reilly, Hatati, Kuhn, Kyogo, Forrest. In comes the ball, into the box, back to O'Hara on the volley, over the bar. He claims it took a touch, no corner coming. Will be a goal kick only for Rangers, and it remains 1-1 in Paisley. So those are the teams. If you missed them, you'll get them at bbc.co.uk slash sportscotland. Kick-off at Dens Park is just over an hour away. That's the second of the live action on Sports Sound this Sunday afternoon. It's only half chance for St Mirren there, just with the shot from Ahara. It was sitting up, it was a difficult skill to take it on the volley like he did. It's always rising as soon as it left his boot over the bar. Lundstrom back to John Souter, squares it to Balogun. Balogun at walking pace, up towards halfway. Low ball in field to Lundstrom. Rangers so pedestrian, St Mirren look very comfortable right now. McCausland though out wide left for Barisic, takes a touch, crosses in. Away it goes by Marcus Fraser and out of play for a throw-in on the far side to Rangers. This is going to be about midway inside the St Mirren half. It's pulled back to Lundstrom. Side foot ball in field to Diamande. Approaching 65 minutes. It's with Balogun, right of the centre circle, to Tavernier. First time to Sterling. Down the line it goes. Tavernier. Fraser comes to meet him. Tavernier has it, though. Some glory moments here in the past. As James Tavernier. Sterling goes down. No free kick, but Diamande's on to it. Fraser and Tanzart combine to win it back, then Kilty flicks it in field to Boyd Munts. Low ball, first time ball forward there to Mandarin. Really good slight challenge to win it back by Balogun. Through Dessers goes Bolton, who is penalised. Rangers have a free kick. Despite Bolton's protestations, despite their protests from the Saints fans, it's a Rangers free kick on the cusp of the attacking third, and it's Simmer in one, Rangers one. Yeah, Bolton is protesting his innocence, but and he, does, he does get all of the ball, but he comes right through the back of Dessers and cleans him out before doing so. Rangers need something to get them going. Surely too far out for a shot, this Neil. No. We've well, said it before about Tavin, you, 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 know you would never rule it out. No. But he's asking Balogun to go up, so maybe he does feel that's the case and even just a situation like this if they can force the goalkeeper into a save it can get the Rangers players going get the well, fans behind something, them well they need something Liam they need something there's been very little your title hopes as it stands are slipping further away James Tavernier stands hands on hips he's dinked it into the penalty area looking for the head of Balogun then Cantwell with it's the first time goes wide and he's left frustrated it stays Saints 1 Rangers 1 here in Renfrewshire it's not a bad chance you know he comes in on a blind side and it's a little clip ball from, from Tavernier. He's asked Balogun to go up, and that was a target. He found them. Balogun just helped it into the penalty box, and Cantwell had just rolled off the back of the, the zonal marking of St Mirren and just doesn't catch it cleanly at all. There's a half chance. Last time Saints avoided defeat in this fixture was the game that cost Giovanni van Bronckhorst the Rangers' job. A long ball forward by... Hemming headed forward by Barisic, won by Bolton in the centre circle. Barisic with the header again, Bolton with the ball, first time forward, cut out by Lundstrom, and now it's with Cantwell. Dessers ahead of him, Sterling's made his move as well inside the box. Cantwell into the area, goes Cantwell, shoots for the far corner, he's not far away. Well, that would have been some solo goal by Todd Cantwell had he found the target there, but it remains Samir in one, Rangers one. But that, on 67 minutes, by a stretch, is Rangers' best moment of the second half. They've been waiting on a wee bit of magic and they nearly got it there Cantwell for one of the first times in the ga game found himself in space with time to drive at St Mirren he does really well wrong foot and Gogic at the edge of the box it opens up for him to curl it into the left hand corner of Hemming's goal but he just sends it out a metre too far he wouldn't come back in for him a really good run wasn't it really yeah. purple. that's why I was saying it. he might be better off the left and getting McCausland out to this right side just trying to get Rangers a little bit more threat 
Yeah, and the whole front three, because as it stands right now, they're not really showing it from the wide areas. The sun comes out blazing down on that immaculate, just about immaculate, Simmer in playing surface. And it's going to be a free kick for handball, I think, against O'Hara. Still a little sign that Rangers are beginning to dominate things here. They're seeing a lot more of the ball in St Mirren territory, and they've got another chance here, Stephen, to get the ball into the St Mirren box. Yeah, similar distance to the one just a few moments ago. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a similar type of free kick from Tavenier, just dinking it into the kind of penalty spot area for Balogun and Suter round the back. Rolled over at the last set piece was pretty well worked by James Tavernier. Throwing the players again along the 18. Tavernier with a dink free kick into the penalty area. It's headed half away. Diamonde controls the edge of the box. Snapshot is blocked. Dessers can't control enough. Hara leathers it clear with the right foot all the way through to Jack Butland at the other end of the pitch. That's what you want to see if you're the defending side in that kind of situation. Here is Tavernier down this right-hand side. Sterling down with the corner flag. He gets the cross in. It's a comfortable take for Hemming. From a Rangers point of view, Neil, for Philippe Clement, at least he's seeing his team playing the yeah. match in the areas of the pitch they need to be playing it in if they're going to win this match. Yeah, if, if, in the last five minutes, they've got any good areas in, the, in both left and right channels. But um, it's very similar makeup to the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, where St Mirren were really good and just sort of ran out of steam and allowed Rangers to start dominating this is this has got the flavour of that but this might change it with all lasagna now yeah yeah you've taken half of Keradine's news away Keradine it's been a long time coming hasn't it he got stripped about 10 minutes ago anyway all lasagna coming on a goal scorer Mikel Mandron coming off to a rousing round of applause which he fully deserves for his performance so far today can all lasagna keep up the standards that he set in the opening what 69 old minutes well, it looks as though he's going to be St Mirren's top scorer the man to my immediate left knows what that feels like and yes. 11th goal of the season for him Stephen yeah he's done well he really has um, his goal today absolutely sensational he's led the line well he's a big physical presence he's fought and scrapped for things and when he, he's had the opportunity to hold the ball up he's done it all you're saying is a very different player he'll be looking to get in behind Rangers defence with his pace he's absolutely lightning yeah here's Boyd Munch ding ball into the box headed away by Barisic 1-1 one, one, 20 minutes left of the 90 Tavernier square to Diamonde midway inside his own half goes long looking for Dessert asking a lot you would have to say he comes right through to Hemming he's able to clear with the right foot and that goes out of play and a throw in despite the best efforts of Greg Kilty to control that would have been one of the best controls of the season had he managed to do that was out for a throw into Rangers, which Tavernier takes quickly to Lundstrom. Back to Balligan. They've not really been testing Zach Hemming in the second half. Rangers. Dessers chests it to Cantwell. Flicks with the outside of the boot for Dessers. Out to the left, McCausland. Simmerin funneling back. Ross McCausland into the box. He goes, darting forward. Plays it across. Shout for a penalty for handball. Goes behind for a corner at this stage. And Ross McCausland's positive play down the left. Yeah, I think it comes off Bolton's head, does it? I thought it was his face, face yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> There's not too many Rangers players claiming for anything else. Cantwell will leave the corner to Tavernier. They've taken a few short ones this afternoon. A man drawn coming off is a... It's a, it's a downgrade in terms of aerial power. He's, he's defended all as well yeah, as he's done up the really other end, Mandron off now though, Tavernier to take in swinger with the right foot from that left hand side and it comes Balogun tries to get something onto it in the end he gets nothing onto it and Bolton bullets the header clear and here comes St Mirren on the counter, they've got pace now in Olisanya if McMenamin can find him still it's McMenamin up against Barisic two on two, Rangers getting back now Cantwell and then sliding in Barisic who puts it out for a Saints throw in level with the penalty spot over on the far side real opportunity there for Saints but McMenamin couldn't quite free himself yeah or free up Oyesanya Oyesanya just running alongside him he just had to put it into the space and let Oyesanya go and gallop after it but he kept hold of the ball but he did well actually you know he travelled a good 60 yards with the ball once and remember the throw in high up in the Rangers uh, final third Suter clears his lines Dessers has gone down under pressure from Fraser off the ball the ref's happy with it Gogic, the up and under, the big switch out the far side, which McCausland heads out for a St Mirren throw in in an attacking position down that right flank. Have they managed to weather that little storm that came their way? The hosts. They're going to throw in on the far side. 
Now less than an hour away from kick-off at Dens, Dundee v Celtic coming up on Sports Sound once we're done here in Paisley. And then the right comes Saints again, strain. It's the cross ball end, didn't look likely, and Suter is to put it behind on the stretch for a Saints corner. So Myrna are good with, the, with Strain and Tanzer on the wide positions, aren't they? Yeah, they're two good players. A lot, of, a lot better balance looked look to the, the side. The cry is come on, you Saints, from the St Mirren supporters. As they look to lead, having trailed in this one. Not for long, Bolton's own goal, cancelled out by Mandarin's header. Now it's St Mirren with a corner over on that far side. And it comes towards the back post, beating everyone though. Breaks out to Diamonde. Wasn't uh, his best delivery of the afternoon from McMenamin. And now it's Suter over in the far side. It was Boyd Muncy took the corner, in fact, over there. And Suter has it. Balligan square to Diamonde across the halfway line. Low ball out to Tavernier, down the right, he's got a bit of space here, controls with the right foot, looks up at the cross. What a and ball it comes, that what is. a ball, and what it goes! What a cross that is. Cyril Desser scores! Potentially one of the biggest goals in Rangers' season! Wonderful cross from the skipper, Tavernier! And Dessers was there to head home! It was all about the skipper! And Rangers hit the front in a game they simply must win. It is in Paisley now. Simmerin one, Rangers two. Well, I've been banging on about crossing for a lot of this game. But my goodness, what a ball that is from James Tavernier. Again, the space is always going to be outside because uh, St Mirren's wing backs are dragged into an area because Todd Cantwell drops into a, a pocket. A wonderful ball from Diamondi, I think it is, it slips him in. But he's on the run, he's got so much to do, and he finds an, an incredible ball, eliminates the goalkeeper, um, eliminates front post area, and Dessers had just pulled off the back of Bolton, I think it is, and it's the easiest of headers because Hemming had sort of come front post, he just knocks it into the empty net, but what a cross. How many times has James Tavernier come up with big moments for Rangers? It, it's all about the cross, it really is, and it was a difficult one because he was heading towards the byline at pace. He gets so much whip on it and just such a, a, a brilliant area. Let's get news of a double change, I think, for both teams. Kerry. Yeah, James Scott coming on for St Mirren and Lewis Jameson as well. And Rangers not hesitating to make changes either. Tom Lawrence is about to come off. He's just having a heated conversation at the moment with the manager in front of me. And Scott Wright as well. They're getting last-minute instructions from Philippe Clement as both teams making a double change. St Mirren, of course, trying now to get themselves back into the game. That's a huge goal for Rangers and Cyril Desser is now up to 20 for the season for his club. 21 in total. We've got one for Nigeria too, so for him personally, 21 for his club. He's now hit 20. He's much maligned. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good return. Um, he's played a lot of football. He's missed a lot of chances, but any st striker at the end of any season, if you've got 20 goals, you're going to be really, really pleased with your contribution. No doubt about it. And that is a very, very important goal that he's just scored there. St. Mirren will be wondering how they've managed to leave him free in the middle of that six-yard box. I mean, the cross is brilliant, but the marking from St. Mirren left a lot to be desired. He's got a simple tap, it, tap in with his head into the back of the net, but that yep. could be one of the most important goals you've scored a Rangers shirt if they finish this game with the three points Todd Canwell off Tom Lawrence on Scott Wright will be on as well just a moment Borna Barisic in trouble and he's going to be coming off by the looks of it he's been a good servant for Rangers Neil but it looks as though this is going to be his final few games in Rangers colours he'll hope to go out with a a treble which is obviously still on for them just now yeah as um, sticky uh a moment ago, 1-1 at Tavenier, that brilliant cross for Dessers puts him in a position where that dream is still alive. Bonabaric, I think today has has offered a, a wee bit more balance. I said that I don't think you get it with Sterling, but he's coming off now, and Sterling will just offer a, a more secure presence across that back four. Tavenier then will be allowed probably to get a bit higher um, with Scott Wright coming into the, an advanced position just ahead of him, but. Yeah, he has been a great servant, uh, Barisic. He's, I mean, the amount of assists that he's had is, is unbelievable as well as Tavenier. 
And Lewis Jameson and James Scott on for St Mirren. And now Rangers with Dessers putting the pressure on Gogic. Runs into Gogic there. They're claiming obstruction at the edge of the box. And Nick Walsh agrees. It's going to be a yellow card as well for Gogic. Otherwise, is it a good afternoon? It's a Rangers free kick. It's the right-hand side of the edge of the box here. And this, uh, they've just taken Barisic off. He would have been... A perfect time. Yeah, well, for him, he scored, it? actually, from just outside the box for Rangers from a free kick before here. Yeah, I remember it was a cracker. Yeah, I think it was. I felt Gogic just body-checked Dessos, who did well to cut inside them. wonder whether Tavernero Cross or the fancies this. Well, he could arch it in to the top left or the right foot, potentially three man Simmer and Wal Diamandes on sight as well. Zach Hemming protecting the middle part of his goal. He's just slightly off to his right, to the left as Tavernier looks at this. So he's, this is an anticipation that Tavernier might fancy finding that top left. He's big gap to the top right, which he goes for, and Hemming holds on. And it stays Simmer in one, Rangers two, 78 and a half on the clock. Rangers in front, far from job done here in Paisley. No, let, let's see if they can learn their lesson. Um, they didn't do it uh, in Dingwall. They didn't do it today when they took the lead. Let's see if they can learn the lesson now and just take control of this match. Butland clears his line. Zolisanya was chasing him down. It's now with Gogic. Knocks it out to Tanzer. Right with the challenge. Tanzer emerges with the ball, though, for St Mirren. Under pressure, slips it forward. But James Scott had peeled off towards the touchline. The ball went towards the edge of the penalty area. And Rangers able to clear. O'Hara trying to get in it. Was he tripped by Lawrence? Yes, he was, says the referee. Free kick St Mirren right of the centre circle. Just inside the Rangers half. Now, gonna, they're sorry. going to be under some serious pressure, these Rangers players, in these closing ten minutes or so. They are, but, I mean, as good as St Mirren were at creating opportunities in that first half, it's not really worked out that way in this second half. They've not really managed to test Butland. They've not had any clear efforts on goal. And that'll be the disappointing thing for Stephen Robinson, but they've got 10 minutes to adjust that. Picked up on the far side, there's the cross flashed in by Jameson. It's going to be cleared by Rangers. And drops down into the midfield position. Opportunity for Boyd Munts here. He slips it forward. Olesanya's going to get there, is he? He managed not quite. Looked like he'd kept in play with the back heel. Wouldn't have been to his benefit on his teams anyway, but he goes behind for the goal kick. And it is Saints 1, Rangers 2. The final 10 now we're into of the 90. When you look at the post-split fixtures, Rangers, those three away games, three of the toughest assignments they could have got, St Mirren, Hearts and Celtic to come Hearts on the final day. Celtic in a fortnight, 13 days' time. And what they need to be, Neil, from their point of view, is within striking distance of Celtic when they cross the city. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I said before the game today, if they can win, then it just applies a little bit of gentle pressure to Celtic and up to Dens. Flick on by Scott Tanzer, only as far as Diamondi, though, midway inside the Saints half. Left foot ball to the left for Dujon Sterling. Level with the edge of the D now of the St Mirren penalty area. Finds Lundstrom, looks up, shoots, and Hemming holds on. Playing with a little bit more of a freedom here, Rangers. But what can St Mirren come up with? in what is now the business end of this game. The Rangers leading by 2-1. to one. It's a different thing that they've got, though, St Mirren to use up top. I mean, they've got real, real pace if they want to go over the top. But Mandron was... Mandron, Stevie, for me, was, was providing a, a better out because he was making a fight of it. If he wasn't getting yeah. flick-ons and holding the ball up, he was making a fight that midfielders could get up on. But just now they struggled to get up on him. Agreed. And Zach Hemming over this free kick which is a couple of yards from the near side touchline well inside his own half though everyone bar he is in Rangers territory and it's a long ball to the edge of the box Lundstrom gets onto the loose one and clears up towards the edge of the centre circle Gogic wins it ahead of Dessers Dessers knows although he scored what at the moment's the decisive goal he knows he's been in a game today up yeah, against Gogic he has but I mean, I want your, I want your centre forward to be a lot more physical. He's he's holding his face. He's done that about three or four times when he's come into battle with Gogic, because Gogic is just throwing the odd arm about or shoulder or shoving him off and then running off. I want to see that from my centre forward. First time from Boyd Munts looking for Olesanya, cut out by Tavernier's chest, and he 
clears it long down Much the right hand side. Dessers on to it, wins it ahead of Gogic this time. Right foot ball back to Diamande. Just level with the edge of the centre circle, finds Lundstrom. And now right, first time back to Tavernier. And then field to Diamande. Clock ticking towards 83 minutes in Paisley. Saints 1, Rangers 2. Tavernier has it, infield to Diamonde. Now it's with Lundstrom on the turn, outside of the boot, flicks it to the left of the circle for Lawrence. Out to that left-hand side for Sterling. He's comfortable in so many areas, do John Sterling. Yeah, this, is good. this is good, sorry Liam, he, he, he is, um, and he, he's just going to offer a bit of security out there. Here's Lawrence, the edge of the box, thought about the shots, disguised, and then as he drops the shoulder, shifted onto the left, he shoots high over the bar. And it remains Saints 1, Rangers 2. Were you about to say it's the first time in the game they've had a bit of control yes, possession? Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. A bit yep. of game management. Yep, just, just looking comfortable making St Man work. St Man have gone really deep, actually. And it's allowing Rangers just to kind of control the tempo of the game. Let's get confirmation of these St Man changes from Kerradine. Yeah, final throw of the dice from Stephen Robinson. Tammy Back is coming on and also Jaden Brown as they chase that equalising goal in the last few minutes. Off comes Ryan Strain. Off comes Boyd Munts. Cardin says Brown and Bakus come on and St Mirren have a goal kick they're just the one behind and whilst all the headlines are about Rangers in the title race St Mirren are still very much in this match as they look to try and finish fifth this season that was the frustration last term it was a brilliant campaign to finish top six it was European football that evaded them and it eluded them and now they're going to have a, an opportunity to finish fifth this time around and return to continental competition for the first time since Stephen Thompson went to see them win the Scottish Cup in 1987. Which would be quite something for the club, I would have thought. Phenomenal, yeah, if they manage it, yeah. Lawrence wriggles away from one challenge, couldn't get away from Marcus Fraser, who clears it, bounces back favourably for Mark O'Hara, and up and under, which Olesanya's chasing, Butlin read the danger, Olesanya was in behind Suter, Olesanya's gone down, it looked like a slip initially, I'm not sure if there was too yeah, much catches, contact with Butland. Yeah, but Butland catches him with his Follow knee, up. Liam, but he, he, he's got the ball first, and then he's, he's, he's made a collision, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure why that's a, a booking in a foul. He's given the free kick to St Mirren. Yeah. Well, Butland was... He's out and cleans the ball and then there's a collision yeah, because Olasanya's pace has taken him into him. Now, unless it, we, he's seen something we haven't, which can only then be deemed as deliberate and why it's not a red. Exactly. I, I don't I'm, understand. I'm surprised. You know? I'm surprised that this has been given as a free kick to... Uh, but if it, is a free, if it is in the referee's mind a free kick, then that's a goal-scoring opportunity for Olasanya, isn't it? Kerradine's had a chance. Let's go to Kerradine. He's had a look at a replay. Yeah, I think Jack Butlin's unlucky there. He's, he's hit the ball with his left foot, and as he's come through to take it, he's caught Olasanya accidentally with his non-striking foot. Yeah. His, his right, it is a sore one, which is why Olasanya's still poleaxed on the ground. He's taken a real sore one, but I don't think there was... It didn't look to me like there was anything either deliberate or reckless in what uh, Jack yeah, Butlin did, I don't which think is why there's anything, I don't think there's anything Butlin can do. His, <laughs> his momentum's carrying him through into uh, Olasanya after... That he's cleared it. I think it's a really poor decision just, from Rick Walsh. I'm just watching it as well, Steve. It's ridiculous. Uh, Butlin's come out. He's, he's done the old sweeper keeper. He's cleared it. Olasanya's really quick. He's brave. He's taken a hit just because of the coll they've collided with momentum towards each other. It's not a free kick. It's not a no, yellow card. I'd agree with both of that. Yeah. It's a sore one, though. You agree with that as well? I'd agree with everything you're saying. Neil. Thanks. You wouldn't get away with that on a Saturday. <laughs> 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 no, you can't agree. Come on. <laughs> no. It's going to be a free kick here for St Mirren. What an opportunity. Lewis Jameson's over it. Left-footed free kick coming out here. He's 22 yards from goal. Right of centre. This is a chance. And it's the youngster Jameson actually... 22 this month. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember Hart scored a free kick and, and Shankland stood in front of the goalkeeper? What's Gogic doing? This, this will be called off unless it, unless he moves. What's he doing? And he's standing on the six-yard line in front of Jack Butland as Jameson prepares to wind this up. The Saints sub. What can you do here with three minutes left of the 90? With the Rangers leading by two goals to one. Gogic has moved. Jameson hits it straight into the wall. Back to Jameson. Shows too much of it to Suter who clears. An anti-climax for the Saints fans, that one. 
And then swept out to Gogic on the right-hand side. Still an attacking chance here for Saints. In towards O'Hara. Balogun wins it back. Then Bacchus for the collision with Diamande. It's a foul, says Nick Walsh. Rangers have a free kick. And they've protected their lead for now. 2-1 they lead. Yeah, I mean, it would have been horrendous had you know, Celtic uh, scored from that free kick, given that it was the wrong decision from Nick Walsh in the first place. Jack Butlin then will take a free kick from where, just about the exact spot of grass where he gave away the free kick a moment ago. He's taking his time over this. Rangers would have signed up for a single goal victory today. Butland with a long ball forward then. Tavernier helps it on its way to right, deflects it into the Saints box. Out comes Hemming to gather. The edge of his box. Dumps it forward with the right foot into the Rangers' half. Balligan with a header. It's going to bounce out for a St Mirren throw in on the near side. Stephen Robinson, as animated as he always is <laughs> down there. He is always animated. I think he's saying to Yasanya, and this what they've missed since Mangron's gone off is to go and challenge for the header. They've not really managed to utilise his pace yet, apart from that one just a moment ago with Butland. Jameson's been robbed on the far side. Suter finds Lawrence in the St Mirren half. O'Hara with a really good challenge. Brilliant from the skipper. And now it's simmering down the left-hand side, but Scott showed too much of it to Tavernier. I'm hearing there's going to be six minutes added on at the end. We're in two minute 90 now, plus six. A minimum of six minutes. Still time for Saints. Rangers are under incredible pressure here. It's not on the pitch, but mentally, you know they cannot afford a slip. So Lasagna touching it back to Bacchus drifts away from a couple of Rangers players rolls it out to James Scott on the left gets it onto the right low ball across his half away O'Hara controls and shoots just slices off Lundstrom over on the far side St Mirren continuing and they've got a man down the box and the referee says no to a penalty and in fairness there's not much in the way of protesting going on as Jaden Brown tumbled in the area. They both just seem to get their legs tangled together himself and young Ross McCausland. I don't know whether they're having a wee check, are they? Probably yeah, they are, yeah. but... I didn't think it was a, a Six penalty, minutes although first. when yeah. you're going in like you're going with McCausland and at pace and you're on the risk, but... Yeah, check over. So we're into the first of six minutes of stoppages. In comes the long throw from Bakus, headed away by Suter. Dessers with a touch, manages to flick it away around the defender, now he's driving forward across halfway, slips it through to Tom Lawrence, it's two on one, Rangers chance to seal it here, Lawrence left hand side of the box, chops onto his right, oh it's blocked oh, at the line by Goggett, how's he done that, unbelievable, he done that? prevents it going into the net, that was a certain goal, where does it come from, he's like a machine, man of the match, <laughs> prevents that going in and it will be a corner only Tom Lawrence was wheeling away to celebrate I had to do a double take there I cannot where has Mandron just come from honestly not Mandron Gogic that's unbelievable what a goal line clearance oh, that he's is like a Terminator getting back you'll not see a better goal line clearance Tom Lawrence has just chopped back and just slid it under him and I'm expecting that to hit the net I'd, and like you Tom I didn't even see Gogic he just appeared from nowhere Rangers corner on the near side, Diamande to take. Tom Lawrence will still be shaking his head in disbelief. He hasn't made it 3-1. The corner, knuckleball to the edge of the box. Lundstrom back out wide towards Diamande. He was in an offside position. Up goes the flag. And it will be a St Mirren free kick. Now, St Mirren are able to get a point out of this. That Alex Gogic clearance oh, becomes honestly. one of the best there's been in Scottish football I'm when not, you I'm just consider watching how he managed to get to that Liam I'm watching a replay and as, as Lawrence and Dessers are going through they're, they're two on one looking every bit the favourite to score Gogic is still tagging ten yards behind them and then hits the afterburners it's unreal you need to see this what a goal line clearance that was sports scene 7.15 tonight if he's getting about him he stops and picks up Dessers but he runs past Dessers and just runs straight for the line nearly wipes out the net but keeps this game alive two minutes of the six that were added have come and gone four left here's Olesanya away from Balogun driving into the penalty area Olesanya oh, what a tackle from that is. Balogun this time Balogun 
rolling and slides in just as Alessania was thinking about the shot at goal to level this game and Leon Balogun makes a wonderful tackle and it remains similar in one Rangers to Stephen Robinson down there having a go at Nick Walsh as Rangers get a free kick I just felt as though Alessania should have pulled the trigger before he did he'd managed to kind of wriggle free of Balogun he's on a, a tight angle but just get the shot away in your left foot he takes the extra touch that invites Balogun to make the tackle don't get me wrong it's an absolutely brilliant tackle from Liam Balogun but Alessania for me should have got the shot away well Rangers have negotiated half the stoppage time that was a nervy moment for them Balogun in a second spell at the club he has had time out injured this season he's been put in in place of Connor Goldson the last couple of matches and he was their best defender last week Balogun he's been excellent again today it's going to be difficult now for Goldson to get back in the team now OK yeah. Philip Clement obviously doesn't mind making changes but you're going to, it's going to be asking a lot to take Balogun out of the side at this point I think his pace he offers um, ahead of uh, Goldson Goldson hasn't been at his best but Goldson has been a brilliant servant um, but that he needed every inch of that big frame of his to, to, to make that challenge we've been treated to two brilliant examples of last ditch full blooded defending in the last five minutes here so to play for a Rangers throw in and they're up the pitch here just exactly where they want it to be with just over two minutes of the stoppage time left at the end of the game here in Paisley Dundee Celtic to come that is now 35 minutes away as it stands Rangers drawing level and points at the top with the champions you will have that game in hand in the city of discovery here Dessers on the turn left hand side of the box tries to roll it back it's a second chance as it bobbles back to him down at the byline, out to McCausland. And he can't win the corner. Now, would they have been better served just playing for time down the corner flag rather than trying to find a third goal? It's going out for a St Mirren throw in. And Saints have less than two minutes left to try and get something out of this. They've got Dundee next week. That's the pivotal game for that final European spot with Hearts and Kilmarnock, surely finishing third and fourth, respectively after their 0-0 draw in Ayrshire yesterday it's out for another St Mirren throw in on the far side just over a minute left Cyril Dessers who's come in for some serious heat this season was the difference at Hamden in the Scottish Cup semi-final last Sunday he could be the difference here if Rangers get through the next minute unscathed but St Mirren are up the pitch and Bacchus is going to take a long throw in here it's midway inside Rangers territory over on the St Mirren right as they attack the goal to the left he's bowled it into the box breaks to the edge of the area as a shot at goal which is just wide from Jameson he caught it well it's taken a deflection yeah. and St Mirren have a corner in the final 40 odd seconds here oh, this is it this is the last chance really for St Mirren Jameson caught hold of that well but it came off a Rangers player deflected wide last chance for St Mirren put it in the box load the box now or never for Saints Rangers have everyone back is Zach Hemming going to come up for it he's not quite made his way to the box he's in the Rangers half in comes the corner from Jameson the header towards goal chance oh it's knocked away by Tavernier he was standing right in front of his goalkeeper oh. Bakus angles it in Bottling goes up and gathers and that will surely be that for Rangers what a chance for Bolton Liam he just doesn't get it clean he takes it on his chest and as he swivels he just misses it what a chance it's all over it's victory for Rangers three league games without one coming into today well, they've picked up a huge three points. And Cyril Dessers is the man who's made the difference, as he did at the National Stadium seven days ago. He's come in for serious cr criticism this season, serious stick. He came up with the two goals against Hearts in the semi, and he's come up with the winner here. It was all about James Tavernier's delivery, though, to be fair. Sculpted the cross, found Dessers in freedom at the back post. And Rangers number nine headed home. That after James Bolton's own goal had given Rangers the lead in the first half. Cancelled out by Mikel Mandron, the St Mirren top scorers, 11th of the season. Dessers is up to 20 for the campaign. And a treble is still on for Rangers. It's a huge victory for them.
for long spells it looked as though they were going to prolong this winless streak in the league which has come at just the wrong time for them but they are back to winning ways home to Kilmarnock next week and then it's Celtic Park and now they're back to level points with the champions at the top of the Premiership who lead currently on goal difference ahead of their game in hand which is now just over half an hour away from kicking off up the road from here at Dens Park where the drama will continue here on Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland this afternoon after it finished here in Paisley in the early kickoff. St Mirren 1, Rangers 2. This Scotland.